This is the IT in the D, only on RawRadioX.com. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. The following program is intended for mature audiences. This is the ladies' man. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so I'm... Well, especially with the back doors open. We just lost our clean tag on iTunes. <laughs> How much scotch did you drink that night, by the way? A half a bottle. Okay, then shut the hell up. <laughs> Woo! You're in your underwear, I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey, I have a headache. Bear me. Who's your big girl? I may have to wipe the geek off. You're not very informative, but why are you entertaining? Shut up! No. You're so white right now. Shut up. Stop talking. How are we not sponsored by PBR and Slim Jim yet? I, Damn I, I, it. I, I, <laughs> Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! I used to hang out at the Mogombo Bar. It was a rough place. The seediest dive on the wharf. Populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, I can't take that position. Uh, I don't know who brought that bell in, but Bob's got a new toy. <laughs> I guess Captain so, Soundboard doesn't know how to run the soundboard. Cap- when are we going to talk about me? Are we at a break yet? So... What would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do? Move it for speed! Go! And welcome to episode 21, American Legal here, the IT and the D show presented by DetroitNet.org. As always, we are in the Raw Radio X studios in beautiful Midtown Detroit, Michigan. Uh, you are hosted by um, Bob the Sales Guy here with David Geek, Jeff of Voice the Reason, and uh, Jeff Haas, the, your title of DetroitNet is what? I'm in charge of the beer? I'm in charge of the beer. That's what it is for you. And we've had Decepticon Spy. We've had Ask Me About My Extensive Barry Manilow Collection. Can I we've buy had... you a drink? <laughs> yeah, can I buy you a drink? This... I think you've had Dave bi- Phillips is my secretary. <laughs> you've had new business cards, I think, at every other uh, event. Um, <laughs> take care of business real quick before we forget. Um, you can give us a call. What is the... Uh... So we're at uh, 313-462-0107. You can hit us up on Twitter at at IT and the D. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash IT and the D. Um, and then I guess just point of business. So we had our event last week at Falling Down Beer Company. Yeah, we did. We yes. will talk about that more momentarily. And then we have uh, upcoming, just published out to the site today, we've got our, and it's coming up pretty quickly, uh, December 12th is our end of the year, happy, merry, Christmas, Kwanzaa, let's just get together and hang out and have a beer thing. That I won't be attending? Yeah, you didn't hear that, by the way. He's not going to be there. Wait, what? what? No, what? Yeah, this is what the, this is what happens when he uh, he misses staff meetings. He's got to make up for it, in, like in another yep. town. Got to go to Louisville. Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> if you could see the, dis- <laughs> the disdain on Dave's yeah. face, is precious. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have a job. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, we don't actually do this for a living, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, just I mean, you know, just for if this is a first time listening, or if this is you're new to the show, you know, we're we're three guys that you know wanted to do something a little bit different in town. There wasn't a good networking to give group. Back. No, we were. Uh, no, we wanted to have a beer with people that didn't suck. We wanted that's to have a beer. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to hang out with people in the IT group and not get charged for it. Oh, did I say that? Right, right. <laughs> um, but it kind of grew to um, to what it is now, unbeknownst to us, and we just kind of you know. We like having a drink every now and then, and you know we just brought some cool people with us, and lo and behold, here we are. Well, yeah. So I mean, uh, so yeah. December so anyways, 12th, yeah. Back, you know, Bob's not going to be there, but Dave and I will be there. We'll, so. we'll survive. We'll yeah. carry on, my wayward son. No. Um, <laughs> December twelfth, we're at Rochester Mills out in Rochester Hills uh, for what has become Say that 10 our. Times fast. Uh, I don't want to right now. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah, it's our annual support the troops uh, thing that we've been doing for the last two or three years now. You know, Russ dot- called in from. Ethiopia a couple weeks back uh, just to kind of kick it off and, and get uh, get the ball rolling with it. So there's a rather extensive frequently asked questions list out on the site. Please go read it. Um, and our site, as always, is DetroitNet.org, or you can find us at ITNTheD.com if that makes it easier for you. I'm sure that. you can find another fat guy with a go-to that drinks a lot of beer to input my name tag on him, and no one will talk to him anyway because nobody talks to me at those oh, yeah, things. Can Bo make it? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can just have Haas wear uh, Bob's name tag. That there way. you go. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, he's been doing P90X lately. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the South Park Fat Cartman <laughs> episode when they send him to Fat Camp? Exactly. <laughs> they just got an impersonator. I'm called <laughs> Molten Spiel. I'm really getting cut these days. That's right. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll update you on Kenny Power's one-liners, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I, that's, I, I guess, taking care of business for, for where we are and where we're going and all that fun happy hoo So we do have a new uh, a new that guy uh, we're going to be writing about very, very soon. Yeah, which is a good, uh, yeah, so we had our event uh, this past Thursday night at Falling Down Beer Company. Fantastic turnout. I mean, we're, we're so happy with everything. In fact, we were talking about this earlier. You know, it's, it's one of those things where the universe must be looking out for us or, or there's some weird undercurrent that goes on out there because, you know, we've got 45, 4,600 members in our LinkedIn group. And what would we actually do if, like, if all 2,000 of them decided to show up to one <laughs> of our yeah, events? Yeah, even 1,000. Even, even, we've had 500. We've had 700. Right. No, it was like a perfectly attended event. Like, we couldn't have fit 20 more. If 20 nope. more people came, it would have been oh, right. bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. It would, yeah, it would have been like a train I had to duck out, yeah. I well, ducked we, outside. And, well, you know. we got the double thumbs up from Mark. Oh, he was ecstatic. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, I mean, so, I'm know, sure he couldn't have been happier. I, you got the email today, Dave, but it's funny. <laughs> Me and Mark Larson worked together, and we couldn't figure out how we knew. Like, yeah. You look familiar. I'm like, it's, uh, when I posted that I was on Facebook, we were there, and, and the, the old marketing gal said, oh, say hi to Mark. I'm like, oh, my God, that's the Mark Larson that was in our engineering group. Back in like 2001 when I worked it at Vario. It all Vario. comes together. It does. It does. <laughs> small world. Yeah, freaky small world. That's why you don't burn any bridges or piss anyone off in nope. the, you know, whatever industry you're in, especially IT, because that's a, wow, what a small world. <laughs> Which actually brings us to the next Don't Be That Guy. Ah, uh, yes. Draft mode. <laughs> uh, yes. So, you know, it, it's, it, for those of you who are new to the show or, or you know, new to us, uh, so yeah, I mean, as we kind of joked about a little bit earlier, this is something we do in our in what we laughingly call our free time. Um, you know, and we, you know, we organize the events and it takes a, you know, a, a not insignificant amount of effort and time and, and, and getting all this stuff put together. And we don't charge money. The events are free. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, I never, yeah. We're not, and we're not getting any kickbacks from any company whatsoever. Yeah. Shocking we, it is to some. Yeah, we, we don't. We pay yeah. Our own bar tab. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we, yeah, we get told constantly we're doing this wrong. Yep. Um, so you know, one of the things that kind of evolved is we you know had a note that you know showed up in the LinkedIn group that you know hey the you know the parking you know wasn't really all that great and it was dark you know and it wasn't really well lit and all that kind of stuff and all right whatever you know no- lights aren't twinkling Clark <laughs> yeah exactly you know the free I had to be- walk another fifty feet I'm sorry yeah the free beer wasn't cold enough um, and you know what and yeah, okay fine you know note taken and then somebody posted a follow up note. And and got like snippy condescending about it um you know about how you know well you know i belong to you know another you know professional network we would know. Yeah, and, 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 ooh, <laughs> that's the sound clip i should have isolated that's right. um you know and if parkings ever you know would even remotely be an issue then we would never go there and, blah, 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 blah. and i'm like you know for the love of god you know sorry yeah so i i <laughs> I, I posted draft one of a rant uh, that i went off on in response and shot it to bob and jeff and, and you know the, our second segment should just be you reading that rant <laughs> you know what because it'll take yes. it'll actually it'll actually take 20 minutes for him to get through it he please read it, he read it to us again at the bar before the show tonight <laughs> it's fantastic well, please and, well, and, yeah. and i'll pull it up and 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 laughably it was bob who said no no i'm like post it yeah post exactly it. yeah uh, like uh, it, please it was like a voice weird, of reason yeah it was a weird override. role reversal <laughs> you know but bob became the voice of reason <laughs> just became the devil on my shoulder going do it do it <laughs> and i was like no, instead of, it was so epic <laughs> instead of the epic ran it was me going we try our best and i'm really sorry oh, yeah. bob, bob watered it down uh, so bad yeah i know i did but I, that's probably the the better way to go in hindsight. I understand, but it needed to be said. Well, and it is. I mean, and it's one of those things where we're just going to talk about it behind his back now, which is more our stuff. <laughs> 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 well, no, but I mean, it's it is us one hundred and one. I mean, and, and that's one of the things that I don't think a lot of people get is yeah, you know we're, we're hiding it. Well, we're not we're not the group that's out there charging you twenty bucks at the door. We're not the group that's out there you know getting a kickback from the bar for every fifty people that show up. We're not the group that's out there you know taking kickbacks and referrals fees whenever we, we try very hard not to think of the we're amount. not selling anything and no one believes it yeah no. there's no speech there's no like we got accused last week of the only reason you got a 501c3 is so you guys could have a tax break it's like well we need revenue first for that right yeah, yeah before that would ever matter <laughs> thanks right yeah, if I had a, if I had a dollar for every time I had argue with somebody that you know trying to convince them that we don't take money we wouldn't need money the free <laughs> beer isn't cold enough that's right exactly so, so yeah, but, that was... you know that that, that 
brings an interesting point, though. It's like, you, you know, you're talking about, like, first world problems. It's like, well, parking wasn't to my liking, so I didn't go. It's or like, it, was, it was too crowded in there. I, I, didn't, I couldn't talk to anyone because it was too crowded. Oh, yeah, it's so loud in here. There's only, yeah. like, there's 40 recruiters that want to hire me, but it's so loud I have to leave. It's like, I think these See people... Ya. I think these people just have built in excuses. So they'll go home, like I mentioned with the, the guy that left because it was too loud. He's going to go home to his wife and go, you know, I really tried to get a job, but man, it was just, the, the, the event was terrible and there wasn't any, you know, it was too loud and the parking was bad, so I went home. I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't see anybody. There was nobody really. really yeah, really what did you equate it to? It was like a high school dance. So no girls are talking to me. <laughs> so oh, yeah. It's, yeah, the, yeah, the guy, yeah, the guy that walks into, you know, whatever, you know, pick your nightclub, <laughs> right. you know, holding up a sign that says, Single and looking for a woman, and it was, hey man, you know, no girls came and talked to me in 30 minutes. I'm out. Oh, you know? that guy that walked around with the sign that said he what he was doing for. Uh, uh, oh my god! <laughs> and then gets angry. Could you, hey, Jeff? Do you know the story, Haas? The guy is walking like he had his title or what he wanted to do for a living, and he's walking around with a piece of paper like a corgi, like a homeless guy. Yeah, like like we'll code for food, and no one came up and talked to him, and he got angry. Like <laughs> this was at one of your events? Yeah, no, it was. Wait. Well, it was at the uh, oh the second yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, was it was the was... Uh, the after party for the uh, Great Lakes Technology yeah. Show. Yeah yeah yeah. And well, that was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? No no no, no, no the one dude. just happened. No, the Great Lakes Technology Show. Oh, the one. It's yeah. a. It's a... Yeah, uh, old Shlaley. Old Shlaley, thank you. Uh, yeah, so like literally, I walk in and he like pounces on me before I'm even like in the door situated like I haven't like I haven't taken my coat off I haven't you know I haven't like I literally got to the because it was on the second floor I got to the top step and it was like shoof, and he was there and wanted to like harp on me about how like nobody was talking to him and nobody did there's nothing here and this sucks and and this awesome poster board that says hire me because I'm a great coder no 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 not even it was it was an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that he had folded in half and then written in like big letters in pen that yeah, so so. But here's the funny part, and here's how this worked. I'm like, dude, I'm literally just walking in the door. Back away. I I I, I will get with you in like two minutes. I swear to God. I don't but even have a beer. It's yet. been a long day. I need a drink. I got to find the host, and then I'm going to do my thing. Yeah, it wasn't even Relax. our event. Yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't even our event. <laughs> so you know, and I go find uh, you know the guy that was running it, and we, you know I you know took it had like. A two-minute conversation with him, um, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I, yeah, I want you. To, I want to introduce you to somebody." And it's a guy who's the COO of a company that's opening up uh, like four or five data centers here yeah, in the yeah. area in the Metro Detroit area. And they're like, they're laying fiber, they're laying cable, they're like, you know, building data centers. Life's good. <laughs> he said, "Laying cable." <laughs> Nice. Um, <laughs> your children. Um, but yeah, so, and, I, and I'm like, hey, I said, you know, just random question for you. I said, you know, while I'm standing here, and meanwhile, this guy is just like hovering around the perimeter of the conversation. And I just said, hey, I said, are you guys looking for, you know, like data center techs, that kind of stuff? And he's like, oh, yeah, all the time. He's like, you know, we're building out data centers. I said, okay, so do you see the guy that's like right behind you? Like, and he was like, oh, the guy that's like hovering around the perimeter. I'm like, yeah. I said, so here's the deal. I said, he's one of our members that comes to our group. You know, he comes to our events. He's, you know, looking really hardcore for a job. I, I know you're the COO and not a recruiter. Could you humor me for like two seconds and just talk to the guy and tell him there are jobs out there? Give him the contact info for one of your recruiters and we'll go from there. And he was like, yeah, man, no problem. He's like, you know, you guys seem like you're doing really cool stuff. Absolutely happy to help. So I'm like, all right, well, excuse me for just a second. So I, I, I look, you know, I look between the two of them and say, okay, you come here. Notice how this took me all of two minutes from having an actual conversation with people and not walking around a room with a piece of paper. Here you go. <laughs> you actually have to, so you actually have to talk to people at a networking event to get things done? You know, there, I mean, that's the thing, though. It doesn't matter Strange what we do. Concept. What we do, where we go, what we give, what do we do? There's always somebody that wants to complain. and it, We're at the point now where our trigger, we have such a hair, uh, a hair trigger. Uh, you know what I always talk about? We get it at the German club, too. You could, like, I always tell the story, like, you could get, well, you could fly Wolfgang Puck out here and cook Chateaubriand for two for you two, wait on you hand and foot, massage your feet, and you're going to look up and go, you know, the green beans were a bit cold. <laughs> you know? and that's, I think that's just the nature of some people. It's like, no matter what you do, they're going to find. The, the littlest flaw and just exploit it and I don't get it because well people joke with us all the time that we do this wrong right you know by not taking money or no whatever doubt. That, I mean that's doing networking wrong 
If you, you take money, though, you, 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 know. you breed that. You know what I mean? Like well, because you, then, then there's a legitimate expectation. Like, you can't bitch at the soup kitchen for your free bowl of soup yeah, right. because it's free. <laughs> um, that's an outstanding analogy. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, I think I, we just found the title of our new Don't Be That Guy. We're the soup kitchens of the networking world. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, want to be the no, soup no, kitchen. No, yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying, you yeah, know. what would that attract? Well, we, we, you know, what I think is we work very hard to get a quality, like the quality of people that were at that event were, were it was phenomenal. Like I, like that's a great thing that everyone oh, yeah. there I mean, is, is. And there top was a little notch. bit. There was a little bit of everything. I mean, there were like absolutely probably eight to twelve really good solid recruiters, um, and then a room full of people that were either just you know <laughs> a looking for a gig, um, yeah. or b you know just looking to meet people or, or get hired. Um, it's like I said. I mean, the cool thing. So that, I mean, that was the funny part about that. You know, the thing in falling down is so it, it was too difficult to park. You know, and yet there were six people that showed up for no other reason than just to say, hey, thanks. Got a job in the last two months because yeah, of was, your events. That was phenomenal. People just you know walking that, yeah. up. Saying, so they, yeah, they weren't even they weren't even there to find a job or looking to hire anybody or they weren't even really looking to network. They were looking for one of us, right? Um, you just know, say just thank to, you. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, to walk up and say thank you. And there were there two rec- two of the recruiters that were there. You I know, mean, how cool with the holidays coming up? I mean, that's the whole reason we do this when we get up in the morning is that you know paying back not to the car. We joke about the karma thing, but dude, dude, that's six families that are can have a normal Christmas this year. Well, you know, it's like you know? we you know we always talk about there was the right after our second ping party uh, back in August of 09 that we did over at Commune. You know, there was the guy that uh, showed up at the Blackfin the very next month and he was a little bit early and you and I were standing there because you know, it was like four something and you know, right. we were just there, you know, early hanging out and, uh, you know, started going into the whole, hey, you know, what are you looking for? What can I help you with? Spiel. And he was like, no, no, no. He's like, look, he's like, I, I'm actually stopping by here on the way back from the, you know, the recruiter office where I just signed a job. I remember this. I signed story. a job yep. offer. I'm going to be making more money than I've ever made before in my life. I've been out of work for eight months. You just saved my house. You probably saved my marriage. Yep. I just wanted to stop by, shake your hand, buy a beer and say thanks. Yeah. Really? I mean, I mean, that's and like so, that, and that's the thing. I mean, and that's the worst part is so literally, you know, that whole thing in the LinkedIn group, you know, about the parking evolved right after I, you know, I just gotten done posting on Facebook, you know, for all the crap, you know, the, all, all the whining I do about, you know, the time sink it is, and you know, and then and the people and the craziness and the madness, you know, it, it's stuff like those six people walking up that makes it totally all worth it, and then one motard comes along. Well, right, and Bob, you'll, you'll, I mean, the the good analogy is golfing, right? You know. You know Bad swing, I hate this game. Bad swing, I hate this game. You know, great swing, you know, hole in one. That's what keeps one. you coming back. That's yeah. what keeps you coming back. All it is right? that one right. perfect drive. Yep. Exactly. It and, keeps you coming back. The, the one thank you that you get makes it all worth it. Right. It does. So what else is going on? Thanksgiving's coming up. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, by the way, I'm driving to upstate New York on Wednesday, Ooh. and apparently there's going to be some awesome weather through the entire province of Ontario. That's going to be fun. Good yeah. luck with that. Actually, yeah. so here, here's a good one, and this, this is one that hit both Bob and I. Um, just one of the things, like, we, we know that people listen to our show because, you know, even though you raging fools will never call us. Nobody and, listens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other so, than Haas. <laughs> well, no, but it made us laugh. So, you know, so you, you were asking about Thursday night. So Thursday night, you know, left Falling Down Beer Company after the event was over and right. went over oh, to yeah, Tipsy McStaggers. Went over to Tipsy's, yeah. um, Well, so I'm hanging out there, and I walk up to the karaoke DJ because there's a karaoke DJ. You didn't, and, you didn't and, do the Humpty uh, Dance. Of course I did the Humpty oh, Dance. Of course you did. But that's, oh, that's, that's not the point of the story. Um, so the point of the story <laughs> is... <Great> sidebar. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> That'll be our third segment. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, one of these days I will get that song on one of the break lists. Um, but no, so he like looks at me, and he's like, hey, this is going to sound like a weird question. And I'm like, dude, I, I, there are no weird questions anymore. Shoot. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, are you in IT? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, do you run a networking group? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, are you one of the guys from that IT and the D show? And I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, oh, I listen to you guys all the time. It's awesome. Fantastic. So he's then, the one. No, so then yesterday, <laughs> we, we get to uh, wrestling with the XICW guys, and we're unloading uh, the tables out of the back of you know the, the, the Bob's car. And one of the security guys goes, dude, he's like, you guys are effing hilarious, man. <laughs> he's like, I'm sitting there in McDonald's. He works at McDonald's in the drive-thru, and he's like, and I got you guys plugged in. And he's like, I'm laughing my ass off. <laughs> and he's like, and people are like coming by and asking me, what the hell are you listening to? And he's like, oh, these three idiots. <laughs> They come to our wrestling. 
So you know my, my life is taking crossing a, the streams you got. <laughs> my life is taking a weird left turn when we can't put the baby in the Ford Flex because I have three wooden tables that are priorities, Bob. <laughs> priorities. You're gonna get destroyed at a wrestling event. It's like, no, baby, you gotta take my VW because I the van is full with wrestling <laughs> stuff. Like, what is wrong with me? I'm a grown man for crying out loud. <laughs> Actually, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, not, not, yeah, don't even get even even get started on the whole blue tarp water thing. That's oh, I, I, uh. I tried to explain some I tried to explain that to someone today who's you know at work who was just asking like you know what you know a why I was yeah. so exhausted today yeah what um, is wrong what with your you? weekend activities yeah, exactly <laughs> and you know and, and b you know so what you know what what brings you to this you know whole wrestling thing and why are you involved in it I'm like so I tell them the whole story and then I'm like oh you know they're like you know and everybody all worked up you know it was a blue, blue tarp water and they're like what. Just mention the domain. That'll get more traffic than any right. other wrestling site. Like you idiots made shirts. Or like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Bob had shirts made. Great. You had blue tarp water shirts made? Yeah. Oh, dude, best, best, logo I've ever, like, best logo I've ever made in my life. No, so back story. Story. Did Paul make it? No, I did. Oh, back- yeah. Even better. <laughs> no, so backstory. Like, MS Paint? The, no. The, the bar that they're wrestling is held at, they have holes in the roof all the time. Instead of fixing it like a normal establishment, they put blue tarps up there, and it collects <laughs> rainwater. Fantastic. Inside the bar, and it drips. Like on everyone, and it's the most nasty. So we always joked about it. So now we had fans get to pick the stipulation. So we did loser drinks blue tarp water, <laughs> and it became like this this huge stick that it makes no. It makes me giggle, but everybody else thinks it's stupid, which I think is great. <laughs> well, and it is, and I mean, it's so yeah. I mean, and that's the other part is you know we we talk about you know laughingly do stuff in our free time. I mean, you know we all, we all have lives outside of here, whether it's you know the wives, kids. This is your poker night, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Right. I don't golf anymore. Let's just say this is my golf money. My bowl. Right. I don't bowl yeah. anymore. Yeah. I stop bowling. I you know I stop playing golf or not. I golf like twice a year now, but that the, you know the things that used to consume all my time now. This is my you this, know this is your other habit. Other yeah, than, yeah. This other is than Monday night's bowling night. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And shirts were made. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Way, <laughs> yeah. You can follow Blue Tarp Water on Twitter at you can <laughs> at Blue Tarp Water. Blue Tarp, Blue, Blue Tarp Water. <laughs> <laughs> and it has its website, right? No, not not yet. No, no it, it, it's it's just part of the fun. So what's been going on in IT news, IT news locally? What's actually uh, locally? I'm not sure, but the the one that really kind of creeps me out that I want to make sure we hit on is so that there's this whole rash and spate lately of fake tech support calls that are going on. Yeah, well, that was a whole that? Microsoft so it's, thing. it's yeah, it's how people calling, spoofing a 206 area code, um, and then basically, you know, number one, I mean, it, you should know tech support is never going to call you, just like the IRS. Is never going to call you and ask for your social security number, that kind of stuff. Right, they should know this. Right, so you know, but you know, they're kind of preying on the older, you know, demographic that doesn't necessarily, you know, know and isn't as familiar with this stuff. Right, and so they're calling up and saying, "Hey, you know, we've detected a problem with your system. You know, this is Microsoft Tech Support. We'd like to get in and fix it you get, for you." You get calls from your bank all the time, like talking about um, fraudulent activity. Every now and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. That those are always creep me out too. Like, who the hell are you? Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, I still, like, yeah, you me, don't know. Yeah, you know, it's a legitimate. You know, called absolutely, if, yeah. Well, like I right. told you, I mean, like, so it was the dumbest thing when I uh, when I signed us up on SoundCloud. So right. you know, and and they're based out of Germany. So I I did not know this. Yeah. So I I, I paid like for the Trader th- Joe's. Yeah. So I you know I paid for the SoundCloud subscription, and then uh, like LinkedIn, which is in Mountain View, California. Right. So those two charges came through within like two minutes of each other. Oh well, yeah. Well, then dumb you thing. Get a call. No. Even better. So I'm leaving the house and I stop and I go to get gas. And, Hard and deny. Right. And so I'm like, what in the hell? Now you think you got hacked. Right. So, you know, and, and like literally, and I'm, I'm picking up my phone to start calling them and I've got, bam, bam, two emails from Bank of America. Yep. Um, you know, that basically say, hey, you know, we've detected unusual activity. Please call us yet. And I'm like, oh, for the love of God. So I'm like, all right, you know what? The, the nice thing about my gas paranoia is that I never let myself get below half a tank. So I'm like, I don't really need to get gas now. I'm good. Right. <laughs> so I, I have a different gas paranoia. But yeah, we all have yeah. gas <laughs> paranoia about you. Yeah. We- <laughs> My, my gas paranoia is sitting right next to me. <laughs> you know which one drove me nuts the other day? Like I went on, uh, was it Logo? Well, no. Bench? So let me. Oh, this one, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm finishing. I know. I, you know. I drive and I'm. You know. I, I call them up and they're like, oh, you know. And, and it's a whole automated right. system yep. where you know, did you, you know, is is this a valid transaction? Is that a valid transaction? You know, they make you verify like your last three transactions, and it's weird. And I'm like, so how do you? you know, you're a bank. How do you not recognize the online world and know that from my past? You know, okay. So if it's all about pattern and history. 
you know, I shop at Amazon. I shop, you know, I buy stuff online all the time. Why would that even be a flag for you? Well, it's interesting about that, too, because when, uh, when Steph and I got married and we switched over all of our accounts around, we settled with National City, which is now PNC. You know, we travel all the time up and down the eastern seaboard to see her family. And our purchase history was always about Metro Detroit, Metro Detroit, right. Metro Detroit. And we started taking these trips out to D.C. or upstate New York or whatever. And just like you, you know, we stopped at a gas station. We were stopping at 7-Elevens. We were stopping at rest stops or whatever. And boom, all of a sudden my car got denied at a gas station somewhere in Podunk, upstate New York. I used to have to For call. the same type of thing because, they, you know, I would call PNC and they'd say, well, you're out of your purchase zone. My purchase zone? I used to have to call the bank every time I traveled when, yeah. I, when I'd go to Japan and Germany and Mexico City and all that. Right. I'd, I'd literally have to call the bank every time going, you know, or Bo would just, say, like, just a heads up. Just yeah, to let them I'm know. Gonna be my, in. my yeah. husband's going to Japan. Don't turn this crap off. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that when I filled out a form on Logo Bench, right, because we were doing some crap yeah. for logo work, the guy, I get a phone call while I'm filling the form out, didn't hit submit yet, didn't pay for anything yet, and it's them. No, wasn't that, and uh, like, you know, wait, how, no, wasn't that legal how, Zoom? They did it too. Yeah, they did it too. That drove me, and I was so not receptive. I did not want to talk to them. I'm like, how do they even know? Well, I'm, as I'm filling out the form, they can see. Oh, it's uh, with, like the right, a, with, like yeah, with the right with the right form. Well, yeah. So yeah, with the right ad- Ajax query, you've got it there. But yeah. so, I mean, so what's going on with the fake tech support calls? Well, so, because- the, so the fake tech support calls. They say, hey, you know, we're Microsoft tech support. We've detected a problem with your system. You know, please open up your browser and you know go to you know whatever you know log me in one two three dot com or whatever the other site is. Um, and basically, they hook in and. And take control of your computer. Well, it's not Microsoft tech support. It's hackers and scammers, um, and you've just given them full access to your entire system. The offshoot of that, though, that was really concerning was there was a friend of mine at work who, so her Yahoo account, her Yahoo email account got hacked. So she calls Yahoo tech support. All that work, though, for what? Well, because I mean, you're hoping to find a well, password they, they, file. You're hoping to find a you know somebody's bank. Or at the very least, yeah, at the very least, they turn your computer into a, a, a yeah another drone, zombie drone, Trojan. Drone, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she call. Well, first she calls her ISP, and the ISP says, "Well, there's not really anything we can do about it. So let's set up. Let's do a guided session." So they hook into her computer and you know take her to Yahoo.com and say, "Okay, you know, here's the tech support phone number." I want to stress that called the tech support phone number on Yahoo's website. So she calls, and the guy says, "Oh, well, yeah." He's like, "You know, no problem. We can walk you through this." No big deal, you know, so she hangs up with her ISP, um, and he says, you know, yeah, just go to this website, log me in 123.com, um, and so while she's on the phone with him, you know, and this guy starts going through files on her system um, and starts asking her questions about, you know, what is this file, what is that file, what's that folder, what's this folder, so she's starting to get a little bit creeped out, so she picks up her phone and starts calling her ISP back, and the dude says, who are you calling? He'd activated her webcam that was built into her laptop. Oh, my God. Um, so needless to say, she completely wigs out, you know, basically slams the thing shut and throws it across the room, um, you know, get, you know, calls her ISP back, and they're like, yeah, you basically just, yeah, your entire computer's host. Just don't. Like, yeah, don't that, trust anything point, on just, it. Yeah, unplug change from all, the yeah, web. Change all your passwords. Do it's, everything. Oh. If you have your emergency restore CD, put it in. Reburn oh it. Oh, my God. Um, Take it out and just put a hammer through the hard drive. Yeah, <laughs> but the really, like, the, the weird, the, or not weird, but concerning thing to me, about that is that so you know she tells me the story and I'm like God that's like really the phone number off Google that's r- ridiculous off Yahoo's website I go googling it's been happening to people since at least August that same scenario same situation there there are like complaints on you know in you know, whether it's uh, you know Google talk threads or you know in but groups the whole thing or is the whole thing is predicated by the fact that somebody will actually answer the call and believe them at their word right so they well, can't no. do anything so, until so the Microsoft tech support thing is someone calling you. Right. The problem with this one is that you're tr- you're calling Yahoo what you think is Yahoo tech support, but someone has apparently. So the question is how they're getting that phone number. They're taking, how, how are they hijacking that phone? They're number? They're taking over that phone number, rerouting it to. We need to get Kevin Mick, Kevin Mcnick in here. Right, <laughs> say that three times fast. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> hey, we are up on a break. This is uh, oh god so already yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, this is the IT and the D show. We'll be right back. Been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. Have you ever seen a grown man naked?
See you guys in the emergency room, huh? <laughs> Hello, pretty lady. Tell me something. What's a beautiful bride like you doing with a malaka like this, huh? It's purely sexual. No, it's... She's into malakas, Dino. <laughs> She's into malakas. Do you believe that? <laughs> What's this, sir? Drink it. <laughs> this drink is, uh, it, it. speaking of drinking it, we are. Fats, man. I'm going to tell you my story, <laughs> man. Give me the keys. Give me the keys, Lisa. I drive. <laughs> he doesn't even have his license, Lisa. <laughs> he doesn't have his um, license, Lisa. This is, we're Bridges. officially legally, uh, we can drink legally. This is episode 21. And, and yet, Bob and I don't feel like drinking. <laughs> no, not after yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was bad. Yeah, Haas and I are the only ones drinking here. We bought a 12 pack and we're kind of killing it off. <laughs> some, you're, you're over there drinking Red Bull. You're not even drinking anything. There's a few yeah, restaurants yeah, that I've yeah. gone to in the past that, you know, and I've the waitress has anyone ever felt good after after eating here and that's how it, every time i go to the ritz it's like i don't care if i don't eat or drink i don't feel good when i leave there it's like there's just like black mold everywhere i don't know what the hell's going on in that it's building the blue tarp water it's the blue tarp free free order a dysentery with every drink um, you know what i want to go back to the that the absolute that yahoo thing the yeah. yahoo that thinks that's yeah. fascinating i wanna, we held off from talking about it during the break because we want to no, absolutely. So, I mean, again, so they're, they're rerouting your phone when you're calling. Well, no, they're, they're not rerouting your phone. They're rerouting Yahoo's line so that you're calling the number that you're supposed to be calling, but it's not it's going not where going it's supposed to, to be yeah. going. And Yahoo can't protect that. What? Well, I wouldn't think that if you're a victim of that, like if Yahoo's the victim of this, technically, right? Yeah. I mean, one of the victims. There's no way for them a to know and b to prevent it until from people start posting about it and you exactly, know, you know right. yeah. So I mean, I, but, I mean, that. like, but but if Yahoo finds out about it, what are they going to do? Change their number? Or are they going to have to call up their ISP or their their service provider and say, um, check your systems? They yeah. just got hacked. So I get network security. You know, I just putting in IPS systems and that. That's uh-huh. not seeing this. This is a completely different uh-huh. animal. Well, because I mean, well, I mean, here's you know, and you know, we had Stanislav in here not too long ago, but I mean, it's you know, one of the things that everybody misses the point on is that you don't. Ne- I mean, that's hacking one hundred and one. You you don't necessarily you don't walk in through the front door. You know, you look for the weakest point of entry. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I, I was gonna. Say, I almost said, say, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't. Class, I know you're, you're waiting for it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The IT and the D show putting the ass in classy for twenty one episodes. <laughs> that's us. Um, Woo. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I mean, you know, you, you look for the lowest barrier to entry. You know, you don't go for where Woo. the security is the highest. You go for where, you know, security is the lowest. And the security is likely the lowest at the phone company but as, opposed thinks, to at the, as opposed to, you know, at the ISP level. Everybody thinks, like, you know, the hacking is coming from China, from Russian mafia. You know, the social engineering aspect of it is fascinating because, you know, you, you, you can only train so many people so many different well, ways no, to, it, to guard against the, you know, the old receptionist calling, trying to get through, you know, following people into the double doors, yep. you know. It, it's, there's so many different ways. I don't think anyone can be truly on guard for do either, no. stuff. Do either of you watch the, the TV show called Person of Interest? No, no, no. I, I was not interested. Is it on, is it on PBS? <laughs> <laughs> sure, no, sure, no short, short, short story long, you know, two guys, you know, trying to help 38. people. Yeah, it's 30, exactly. <laughs> But they're but they're they're it's one, after one, Sanford and Son. It's on channel two point two. It's on the digital over the air broadcast. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Hit the bell <laughs> before I hit the both of you. <laughs> I'm gonna slap you with a slim jim. Mom, someday this computer gonna be yours. <laughs> it's on after Mama's Family on channel twenty on Sundays. <laughs> it's, on, it's on after a wrestling show that nobody watches. <laughs> there you go. And I'm done. <laughs> so per, no, really, we're interested in person of interest. Tell us more. Tell us more. Well, like, do they have a car? Well, it's two guys that are trying what? to hack into. There's two guys trying to hack into a system, and the one guy's looking overlooking the other guy. You know, working on some PC. And he's like, "Are you trying to hack into the system?" You guys, no, I'm just looking at this the the person they're trying to target. I'm looking at their the, so, the person looking, of interest. I'm looking at their social social media profiles, and he, the 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 phrase that he said was, "It's amazing what people voluntarily give up online on social uh-huh. media." I don't need to hack anymore. I can just dive into their entire life. Well, so that was just, that, just by being an observer. Well, that was, was that social media you know. experiment video that we posted exactly. on the IT and the right. page. talked about last week. Ago, yeah. yeah, that was going to be my point, but you know, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was tired of waiting for you to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't make it. <laughs> but no, so I mean, it's, you know, there was that you know article that came out not too long ago about how basically somebody was getting contractors. Uh, 
uh, like like with clearances, um, right. basically divulging anything and everything they were working on by pretending to be a recruiter on LinkedIn. Oh my God! You really? know, so they, they they built a fake recruiter profile and started reaching out to you know people that were working on DOD contracts that were working on you know whatever. And number one, they were amazed at the amount of information that they were posting publicly on LinkedIn on exactly. what they were working on to begin with. Um, but then number two, what they would divulge once they reached, hey, you know, yeah, recruiter, great job, want to talk to you, you know, cryptography, da 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 da, you know. And then, and then they'd start, you know, people would just like, just oh, yep, okay, well, here's everything I've done for the past two years. Really? And you got to wonder why all the social media sites are locked down on major corporations, That's right? Exactly that well, thing so- right there. Everything that conveniences us completely screws us. In the, you know, you have you want to have Wi-Fi so when you can you know so you can have internet access, but then they track where you're walking in the store. Right. Um, yeah. Have you, ever, have you ever looked at your Yelp history, like on on the map, like all the little pins that show up on the map? Like I was just looking at mine the other day. It's like everything is pinpointed, like on the whole I seventy five corridor uh-huh. from my house all the way down to Detroit. It's. It, I mean, not that that's anything secret. Yeah. But it's just fascinating looking at it actually on a map. But like you know? even like GPS, like Google Maps has got me out of so many problems. Right, but yet you can get tracked. Um, right, absolutely. you know when I travel on business, the first thing I do is open up Yelp and I say bars around Bar. me, and I read a couple. Of, <laughs> yeah, then I read a couple of reviews. And I'm like, that place looks good. I'll go there. But again, you're you're opening yourself for vulnerability. So everything that's cool about all this great technology completely can end up screwing you, and that drives me. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, you know, but like I said, you know, get, getting back to the whole, you know, hacking in thing. But yeah, I mean, it, it touches on you know that social media experiment that we were talking about, right? Where it, it is. I mean, you you go for that lowest barrier of entry. You know, when, when you're trying, you know, you, okay, so you know, there's a you look at, you look at a house. You know, they've got a steel reinforced door. They've got you know bars on the windows. They've got da 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 da. But you know what? They've got crappy single pane glass windows in the basement. You know that because you know, that's all they did there. That's where somebody's going to go. Well, it's, you know, again, it's always based on your level of paranoia, too. You know, I, you know, all the school districts that I've called on go, yeah, we don't even have a firewall. We just port block. And it's like, well, really? Yeah. You know, but again, you know, how surprised much, they, even, they even know that much. How much stuff can you possibly put in, though? Like, you don't, like, you put in a regular standard firewall. You know what I mean? It's, it's Again, it goes back to... How much can you possibly protect? You can go overboard with. A well, lot yeah, of it's stuff. the yeah, it's it's okay. You want ninety nine percent uptime or ninety nine point nine 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 percent uptime because those those three extra nines cost you you know million twenty million dollars. Yeah. yeah, Bob, wasn't it you that posted that uh, to Dave and I that link to Lifehacker about all the different online services in the cloud? Oh, and how they actually uh-huh. how, how well they, they actually protect your how data? How well they yeah. actually encrypt everything? And like and, Facebook and was, was the best one. Yeah, I was Facebook sh- and I was, Twitter. I was shocked that Facebook and Twitter were the best, and I was shocked that uh, what was it? Apple and AT and T. AT and T were the worst. Cast, yeah, we're I was horrible. shocked at how many red X's I saw across the board there. Unreal. Well, but I mean, well, but that's the thing is, you know, and, and there was I don't know if you read any of the discussion oh, that was yeah, taking place absolutely. underneath it is, you know, everybody was like, oh well, you know, but I use that as my ISP. Well, okay, but it's it's not your web traffic that we're talking about here. It's you know your data. You know, and and how well they're protecting the information that they have about you, like your billing address, your street, you know, and all that fun stuff. You know, but it, and it is. I mean, it's it's ridiculous how accessible open. your identity as a customer yeah. is. Well, I have it written in my will that my lawyers to delete my uh, cookies and search history on my computer <laughs> right. before anyone gets into yeah, my It's on computer. my medical alert badge. Delete browser history. <laughs> who's, who's your executor? Who's going to take care of that? Bob? I, uh, well, I'll figure it out. Yeah, that's, yeah I think we kind of have a three way pact. <laughs> yeah. And mark that down. <laughs> yeah, no, I won't be isolating packed off that sentence. That's right. <laughs> Dave and I'll flip a coin to ex- right. yeah. execute who Bob's to, will. Who has, to, who has to take care of Bob's computer? <laughs> but but again, though, for every time that this someone gets alerted of something like this, someone's coming up with three new schemes. You know, oh, yeah, by the time you hear about it, it's already yeah. too late. I mean, it's no right. different than in the 80s, people reading the obits and robbing people that died. Right. You know what I mean, how far do you possibly, can you go? I mean, obviously, you got to be cognizant of what's going on. Well, the- but, dude, someone, you're calling a number that shows the number, you know, just like Comerica calling me, um, you don't know, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, because I mean, there are. I mean, it's you know how how hard is it for somebody to just start robo dialing, and as soon as you get you know and you know I mean it's and there yeah, are standard questions. Games. But if yeah. the worst thing that happens, well, ver- is that verify they- you know your the last four numbers of your SSN. I don't know who you are. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I, I you know, right. no because that's you know if I give you that piece of data, then I don't need know I mean, who you are. That's like one 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 piece of the whole you know two factor authentication. Right. <laughs> let me let me throw this out there. I mean, what the worst thing that's going to happen is you got to do a backup restore on your PC and you lose fifty bucks. 
Like, pfft, who cares? Like, I'm at that point. You know, oh, actually, you know what? Let's No, because all of your stuff, like, I, I would venture to guess that most of the uh, data that you have on a regular basis is managed in the quote-unquote cloud. What right. is the cloud? Well, it doesn't matter. But it's, <laughs> it's not. A it's place not, where the data is. But it's stored. not. Ooh. It's not on your p- particular hard drive of your computer. But what I'm saying is, somebody. Yeah. Somebody if you takes, backed over your computer right now, you probably wouldn't lose the majority of what you have, right? Uh, no, no. I have it backed up on a terabyte drive. I have it in my safe. Yeah. So, um, you know what the new scam is though? Speaking like uh, the, you're talking about the technical. I'm talking about the non-technical. Uh, cashiers at like Meyer Walmart, you know, saw this. The, the cash back. Sc- I, I saw. I thought yeah. it was a joke did, until wait, someone I know got hit. What? So you buy like 120 dollars worth of, worth of stuff at Meyer. Right. Um, goes for 140, and they pocket the 20. So they do the cash back, and they don't tell you about it. Oh, nice. Um, one of my friends got hit with it. Uh, the bartender at Muldoon's, she rang up nine bucks worth of stuff, receipts for twenty nine dollars. Duh! And you don't pay attention. I mean, people, they're they're. She saw it when she got home. She was like, "Cause you just swipe your card and yeah, hit you your don't number. pay attention. Right, so, you, don't, right. you hit yes right. and you go. Um, especially if the bill's like one nineteen and all of a sudden it's one thirty nine. Like uh, you're not gonna look. Well, or, the receipt. Or, or yeah, look. like you know, yeah, you're in a checkout line and you've got a you know giant ass cart full of groceries. And as are you really gonna notice if an extra twenty bucks, right? You know, while right. they're you know if they're doing it while while you're, you know, while they're scanning stuff, and you, all of a sudden, okay, well, yeah, the total's two hundred bucks. Okay, that Whatever. sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. depending on the place you go to, it's it, it's like less than fifty bucks. You don't have to sign anymore either, so it's not even acknowledging the total, right? I think it's twenty five. Yeah, it's twenty five bucks. Yeah, yeah, credit you know, card transactions is twenty five bucks. Yeah, yeah, I gave up on the discipline of like keeping receipts from like you know uh, automated you know gas station. Yeah. you know all those you know tellers and everything. I don't even bother looking. So yeah, to the point like I would be. I know, wonder how many times I've been. I bet you because I don't look at my. I don't yeah, look that's at what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't look at any of that stuff. And Stephanie's you know when we're all. I dating, barely check my like, bank. What was the bill? I'm like I don't know. Whatever it was. Like like that's my standard yeah, response. It was what it was. It yeah. was what it was. As long as it went through. Right. Right. Yeah. The check cleared, honey. Just be quiet. Good. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder how many times because if this is that big of a because again I thought it was one of those Snopes like BS oh, yeah, stupid right. grandma forwards. But now that you describe it, it's like the perfect scam. Right? Yeah, I mean, if oh you, yeah, if you do it every few and far between, and yeah, but that's what are. happens when Teaching you people how to do it. You know, <laughs> and as much as I'm against the whole you know pay workers more at Walmart, that's what happens when you don't pay them. You know what I mean? They look right. for ways. Well, to Well, and that's the so there's uh, time. they're going to steal you from know, the store. They're going to steal from people. You know what, Bob? But you could pay them eighteen dollars an hour, and there's still going to be people doing it. No, there will be. There's yeah. walk yeah from all walks of life, no doubt. Right, but right. it's going to be more yeah. There, there are scam artists everywhere, but yeah. you know. So the funny thing, you know. So Walmart, you know, has been taking a beating on social media because of the whole you know canned food oh, drive to help so our stupid. associates have right. a have a good Thanksgiving. And the weird, like it's the backlash is not just on social media because now the backlash is coming against Walmart for pay your people more. Like, stop being jerks that only let people get 38 hours and you don't pay for benefits and you don't do this. I came from the school of, you know what, if you don't like it, don't work there, don't shop there. I think it yeah, goes. If you don't like what's on TV, it goes, change the channel. It goes above and beyond it, though. When you are doing, like, that's the first time I was actually upset. When you're like, wait a minute, you're doing canned food drives for your employees? Right. Like, the balls. <laughs> like, are you are you kidding me? It's like well, you give them shit off the shelf. Like, don't ask me to do it. I have a whole bunch of yeah. cans of food. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you give them the dingers? Like, you send them back to the distributor. Like, have I, your butler from your mansion come down to hand out cans. Oh my god, yeah. That was the first time I was like, you know what, you know, and I get the whole, you know, they, they do always do the Costco comparison. I don't think you can compare the two because Costco has got what a tenth of the employees. I think they right. have 300,000 employees compared to 3 million. Um, but you know, again, if you're going to pay them, you, when you pay bottom of the barrel, you're going to get bottom of the barrel. Yep. You know, it, it, it you know, so again, what do you do? The world needs ditch diggers too, or do right. you take care of your people? Again, I'm I'm from the you know, I'm I'm trying to look at be objective and looking at both sides instead of being like the the free market capitalist pig that I am. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, and, and, and we're back to that again. No, 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 no. no. We're trying to steer clear of it. That's right. why he was you know, treading. But I hope I hope lightly. You know, again, though. Um, <laughs> this is the thing, like everybody hates on Walmart, and guess who's going to be standing in line on Black Friday? Is everyone going? Oh my God, I need that Emerson thirty-two inch LCD for one seventy-nine. Nah, right. I'm going to step on your head. <laughs> um, 
I, was, I got to the, was, I got to the best view wheel first. No, speaking of that, yeah, because Black Friday's coming up. Is anyone going? No, no, no. I'm not either. I avoid it like the plague. I, I had I had a great. Uh, I'll be I'll be on my couch. Bob, tell your awesome, I'll be on my tell, tell your awesome story about Amazon Prime. I oh yeah, no, there was a there was this a great awesome. there was a great thread on Reddit about your your horror stories. If you worked in retail, tell us your your horror stories. And there was a bunch like you know old lady got a pen in the neck and people are stepping on her and like guys are throwing their ten year old kids into piles to pull out like at four in the morning and I'm like you know what here's my I'm just trying to picture this here here dogs and cats living together mass yeah. hysteria you people, want you want the Barbie doll here a kid go get, right you know, go chuck get the it. kid into a pile my of favorite, bodies yeah, my favorite story is this guy's a truck driver and he's first in line at uh, Walmart and he's there for four days he's got the generator the tent the whole and he's bragging this up and down so awesome. a storm and he's he deserves whatever happens to him no, 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 this is great he took four days off of work to get this TV and he's telling him, I'm gonna have the best Super Bowl party ever and I'm gonna all my friends are gonna love me. I'm gonna be the best party you you know you're gonna no, no one's gonna miss this party I'm gonna be great and uh, they open up the garden center like 10 seconds before the front door and all the TVs that were gone within like there's only 15 of them for whatever price it was well, yeah and he, by the time he got there they were all gone he was left with this proverbial <clears throat> in his hand and he, he didn't have a TV and it's like dude you wasted four days of work like what what could you have made like how much money could you have made in offset that and I said so I spend seventy nine dollars on Amazon Prime. <laughs> no, that's what I said. I go. Here's my horror story. I go. I ordered a TV on my couch on Black Friday, and it showed up on Monday on my porch. Right. Oh, it was awful. Delivered for free. <laughs> right. But I, I had to step outside into the cold right. to bring it in from the porch. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to put pants on <laughs> to open the door for the delivery guys right. to bring right. it in the house. Yeah, exactly. But that's one thing. On is it like again? Is it because I know people that are like rich and they'll go to the casino and drop like three grand just to keep the blood flowing, right? Just so the hunt you know what i mean the competitive nature is that like women's version of like playing tackle football or like you know what i mean like there's this competitive nature this vitriol you know there was another story on there that i laughed is that the people are there for like three days at target like in front there's, yeah there's people already and camping they, out right now yeah, yeah, Best yeah, Buy. But, but they ran in and they all they did was buy the the two dollar towels they had a whole shopping cart oh, right. <laughs> so like they didn't go buy any like the 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 door busters or whatever they bought Two dollar towels. Like you spent three days at Target, and yeah, exactly. You might need to reevaluate some life decisions. But I right? don't at that point. But I don't. Is it is, seriously though? Is that like the the competitive thing for women? Like guys will like you know go play I, sports, whatever. You is know, what, honestly, I don't, I don't, it could be because like I know like so Anita tends to be like gets very very addictive about the whole deal finding thing because that's just her thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Stephanie's, Stephanie's uh, addicted to Groupon. So. Oh yeah, so I mean it's it, it you, you might be onto something. I mean it, it might be that equivalent. And, yeah, but you know what? Steph went to one Black Friday sale at Meyer and she vowed never again. You know, it was one of those things where it was like morbid curiosity. She woke up at like four thirty in the morning, went to Meyer, and there was already a line out the door. She went and picked but what up did, one we did thing. It, we did it one year. We we we, we decided. You know, we were living at the old house. We're like, right. all right, you know what? Let, let's you just want to check kids, it out. We were like, you know, yeah, let's just let's see what all the chaos and madness and right. in the about. days of e-commerce, though, and, and technology, you can buy on your phone. Like I, I went to well, ga- let me, uh, but I went to GameStop. I, I think I'm going to stop going there. I went to GameStop to go buy games for my Xbox One that I got because I pre-ordered right. it on Amazon for the, for, for the family, right? For the family, for the kids, yeah, um, <laughs> for the children. But I pre-ordered it on Amazon and showed up on my porch. I didn't have to spend the night at GameStop and get it at midnight, right? Um, so I go there and I go, hey, do you have this game? And uh, He's like, no. He goes, well, I'll just order online then. He goes, well, we can order online. It'll be here in 10 days. I go, Amazon Prime, dude, it'll be here in the morning. And I go, he goes, yeah, I can't beat that. You know what I mean? So yeah. why even walk into a GameStop again? Where, you know. Well, it, uh, the the prices for electronics. <laughs> if if at- Dragon's listening to us right now, he's so pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get over it. <laughs> Well, that's just like, are the people camping out knowing something that we don't like? Are we being goofy? Like, are there prices so good that beat e-commerce? Even I've with never, the shipping? That, I've never. That, that's never happened. They do if you're not paying attention. So, like, you know, the big scam that nobody really pays attention to is, okay, yeah, it's a Sony 51-inch TV. But it's the one-off that they bought. You know, they brought containers full in from China that have that's the one, the one they're camping out for, right? Is what you're saying, yeah. So you know, uh, but all you see is the Sony 51 inch, and you think it's the killer one that's the high end model that sells for like you know fifteen hundred dollars, right? When in reality, it's one that has one HDMI input, if that. You know, no other inputs on it. Yeah. Won't you know? Won't talk has, well. Has, has, between, it's scaling. Has, yeah, has three uh, bad pixels in it. But right. I never went to someone's house. And they're like, hey man, got this on Black. Friday. 
Friday we paid this much for it. I've like, never no heard that story. Ever, never, not never. once. I know a family that goes like religiously, like the, the his wife. That's her thing. And I'm like, not once is they they, they bought like this crappy Emerson TV one year. Right. I'm like, that, and this like I don't think I don't even think it works right now. <laughs> um, but again, what can't you buy? Like Amazon had a thing for uh, Kindle Whites for 19 bucks for yep. like, 10 minutes. And I know like two, three people that got them. Yeah, it's. Um, that, and, I mean, that's the way to go. And you that, didn't have to step on someone's head for it, right? <laughs> you just had to click a button. You know the whole Amazon uh, pre-order thing. That's kind of dangerous too. Every now and again, I'll get a package on the on the front porch saying, uh-huh. "That's right, I forgot. I I ordered that like six months ago." Yo, damn it! Crap. <laughs> that was. The I gotta X- go check my credit card. <laughs> that was the Xbox One. I think I ordered it three months, two, three months ago. Yeah, it's like you forget you order yeah. it. It's like all of a sudden, oh look, like it's, it's like showing Christmas. up. Ooh, yeah. Presents. Yeah. Ooh. Well, was, in the beginning, somebody got me something. Oh, it was me. me <laughs> Speaking of. Uh, Xbox One, it's it's. I know you guys aren't big as much gamers as I am, but it, it's it's. No, it's my kids it, are my kids are getting into it. It's insane how good of a box that is. I'm not kidding. It's yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, that's right. I did. Uh, I went there, didn't I? Yeah. It's some good box. Um, but <laughs> just keep saying it. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. The the the, the I, I don't know if this is cool or not, but you can not for another couple of weeks. It's not that too. Yeah, no. Then it's. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have no three more? Three and a half. I'm counting down. Um, you can so add, like you can. Door. It it hooks up to your cable box, so now you can actually play a game. And in the top corner, you can actually have the the game on. You know what I mean? So if you're playing, okay. Man, you know, eh, am I going to use it every day? I don't know. Um, Which you couldn't already do with the picture in picture functionality of your TV. I have not used that in. I could. Is the Xbox in like interface years. different? Different? Because it, it's different a, it's it? like a Windows 8 GUI. It's almost the same uh, as. Uh, so it's talking to the, the PC cause, upstairs because your TV does that. Your boxes I talk have, to one another. The boxes talk. Um, <laughs> when's the last time you used picture in picture on your TV? Never. Eh, if I'm looking to like keep an eye on a couple of different things at the same time, maybe maybe, maybe, yeah. 19, maybe no one, 1996. No one does. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know if my LCD t- TV even has picture in picture. Probably a split screen because it'll it'll. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, you've got right, again. That's what TiVo's for. Nine inputs. I'm recording four things at the same time. I don't need to watch picture in picture. The, the only good thing, like the cool thing, is like you ever do something like really cool in a game, like oh my god, I wish I recorded it. You know, because the guys that put like the clips on right. YouTube, like you can tell it, yell at it to record. Like if you're, but again, I don't know how they do that. If it's like Bob. you already did. Bob, if you start recording your video gaming sessions oh, I, I and mean, sending us links, <laughs> I, I, um, you I, will never hear the end of it. Just so I, I might, if it's if it's Grand Theft Auto, I will. Otherwise, <laughs> look, I punched a hooker. <laughs> it was funny. And on, on that note, <laughs> yeah, we are up on a break. This is uh, this is the IT and the D show. Uh, we are guestless tonight, except for Haas is in the house. Yeah, if you haven't figured that out yet, it's just you know, it's just us it's and Haas. We're having fun tonight. It's Thanksgiving week, yeah, we're just, just Haas. We're rambling about. Yeah, we'll nothing. come back and talk about all the things we're thankful for. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> this is the IT and the D show. We'll be right back. You like rap music? Yeah, I like that. You like rap music? Well, turn around real slow then. I'm from the Rap Coalition of America. Take that gun off throw it over there. Throw the gun over there. If you like rap music so much, how come you ain't smiling? I'm smiling. Smile. Smile real big. I'm smiling. And let's do a rap together. Go ahead. Yo, baby. Yo, baby. Yo. Yo, baby. Yo, baby. Yo. Say, ow. Yo. Yeah, ow. Mm-hmm. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Now. You're looking at now, sir. Everything that happens now is happening now. What happened to then? We passed that. When? Just now. We're at now now. Go back to then. When? Now. Now? Now. I can't. Why? We missed it. When? Just now. When will then? Still the best two minutes so, of movie history. No, I heard that they're actually trying to make Spaceballs 3, the search for Spaceballs 2, which I think is absolutely genius. <laughs> Wait, did you, awesome. did you, re- you read that interview with Rick Moranos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. They're, all, they're all under, like, you know, super confidentiality, you know, secrecy agreements. So they can't talk about it. Yeah. Well, Princess Vespa hasn't worked since Melrose Place. So right, she's right. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 this is uh, episode 21, uh, Legally Drunk, or who, what do we call this one? Who would American? they get to do barf, though? Oh... Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah, Lone Star, he's like the president of every other movie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's over there fighting aliens. Well, maybe, you know, John Candy has a loser brother like, you know, Dan Oh, Aykroyd no, dude, or, Eric. Like, uh, she did. What's his nuts from uh, Modern Bob Family? Could, maybe Bob could do it. Oh, boo. <laughs> no, the guy from Modern Family. 
Oh, the guy that plays Cam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be... <laughs> that, actually, he looks like him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he does, yeah. Well, it was the... Everybody Steve was... Gora called me that one time. He's like, you look like... I'm like, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> just kick me in the balls while you're at it. Like, really? <laughs> well, like, everybody's mad that, you know, Chris Farley is dead all over again because of the uh, the mayor of Toronto. The mayor of Toronto, Smoking yeah. crack. God, and, is that oh, funny? Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, it, it's... Well, what, a, what a train wreck. Well, and here's the thing. I'm like, you know... It, no, the, he's, it's great because he doesn't apologize for it. He's like, this is what I am. This is what I do. It's kind of like us, <laughs> right? Oh yeah. Well, Instead I, of Cowtown going, I like to issue an apology to. Right. No. I'm checking like myself Anthony. into rehab. Yeah. Right. yeah. My name is Anthony Weiner. <laughs> right. And I found God, and I'm <laughs> yeah, going to right. apologize to everybody for everything I've ever done ever yeah, in my step life. Step one ever, is ever. <laughs> right. So hey, uh, we are back on uh, the IT and the D show. Our phone number, not that anybody cares about yeah. anything we're babbling yeah, about, no, is no, no one's going to call three one three four six two zero one zero seven. You can hit us at at IT and the D or on Facebook. Dot com slash IT in the D. Yeah, you guys sent me this weird email today, and I read about three minutes of it. It was kind of like a, uh, a Goodwill hunting or whatever. Like, just like, <laughs> and the, and the, like the beautiful mind. <laughs> the beautiful mind, yeah. Like, it's all about cryptography, and I completely checked out. And uh, But you guys can't stop talking about it. And it sounds cool when you got deep into it. So well, it's awesome. So it's uh, Cicada thirty thirty one or thirty thirteen thirty thirteen. Yeah, believe. yeah. So and it's it, Cicada. Well, Cicada, the creatures that only come out every thirteen or seventeen years that it's make those really annoying years. Hairs. Like well, no, it's it's thirteen or seventeen. They do alternate. Like oh, Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're yeah, they're like little roaches that, that come oh, out of the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. All right. Yeah. Right. You know, you, you hear the distant humming off in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. So uh, it's a group. Uh, no, John Cicada. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, it has, it, it has nothing to do with the bad <laughs> oh. singer from Canada. Oh, Although yeah. that would be Cicada. hilarious if you got to the end of the scavenger hunt and it was just... <laughs> Dude, that would be like the ultimate Rick roll ever. That would be Is fantastic. at the end of it, you, you load a John Cicada video. That would be outstanding. Uh, aw. <laughs> uh, aw. <laughs> yeah, which brings but us back I, to butthurt. <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell is this thing again? So it's they posted it on 4chan originally, um, and, and, yeah, and I didn't even know what that was when I read. Through really? This. Yeah. Um, so they posted an image on 4chan, on 4chan and basically just said, "Hey, what do you see?" Um, and it was, uh, and they they posted like a couple of lines uh, from an old you know English poem kind of thing, and it's. So cryptography, for those playing along at home, um, is all about, you know, codes, you know, codes and encryption and all that kind of fun stuff. And so, numbers. Yep. And so this was an offshoot called steganography, which is basically you encode things within an image that so that it looks like a normal image, but it's not. Um, and there was the whole... Like the schooner scene in Mallrats? <laughs> it's not like that. That's what I'm envisioning. Oh, a sailboat! Exactly. Bob solved it. <laughs> is that not what it is? No, Ethan. Exactly. Solved. That's not what it is. <laughs> and, now, and now Bob's listening to John Cicada. It's not a Rorschach test, <laughs> right? So no, oh, it's a sailboat. So I mean, Bob's it looks like a it looks like a photo. But if you take certain steps, like if you know what it is, you know what it, it's you know what it's more like. You know those composite photos where it's like you look at it and it's a photograph or a painting or whatever else, and then as you get closer to it, it's actually one of those things that's made up of like 100,000 other photos. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen those. So, c- kind of the same thing. So, I mean, there, there's pictures within the pictures actually and very codes within the code. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, people started trying to break it and figure out what it was and, you know, the people that did wound up getting to a web address, um, which had another, you know, clue, another puzzle, another thing that had to get decrypted. Um, and it was funny because, you know, one of the things that was really interesting about it is they were, they were, they were basically jerking people around on some level. Um, well, it wasn't that. There, I mean, the the whole point of it was a test, and that's what people were trying to figure out was it was it some sort of recruiting thing for the government, or was it just a, or was com- it a think tank? Was, was it, it a think tank? Was it uh, some company trying to do some sort of viral vi- video? Because the whole thing was like the the story was uh, following some guy that that dove into it deep, and he's like, he like, why do they want to do it if they don't know what's at the end of the rainbow? Because I mean, it's why, a puzzle, why, dude. Well, why do you climb a mountain? Because it's there. I mean, some people are just really into trying to solve puzzles. Well, so I, I never so, got the mountain climbing thing anymore. Well, no, but well, so no. like you know, it's like I was telling so, it's like I was telling you earlier. You know, it's it's every every geek's take brain a helicopter. Like, why bother walking? Is nice. <laughs> every geek's brain is kind of wired in that direction. I mean, right. you, you tend to you know, okay, why isn't the network working? No, it's bragging rights. It's I, I did it. You did. Well, absolutely, yeah, it's oh, bragging absolutely. Right. absolutely, it's bragging rights. But so yeah, you the, climb the mountain to plant your flag there. The the story is following this guy. So he took a. 
he actually took time off of his job to deep dive into this and try to figure out because he's he's a cryptography yep. cryptography expert and he's he's going into this and he actually <laughs> cryptographer he, blah, 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 yeah mischiefpreneur. <laughs> So he he solved the first uh, couple puzzles and he got to what he thought was one of the solutions and it came up with this you know bogus solution. That Sounds said, like a bad Brendan Fraser. Well, movie. no. So basically, it was a duck. <laughs> it, it, it was a, a picture of a duck that said, "No, no, it's not that simple. Try again." Right. So like he went through like you know basically he used all of the tools that he knew that he normally used in his day to day job, and while well, whoever set this up knew that's what people would be doing, and right. so through like Caught basically the past threw a bone in there that okay the 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 first solution you find is not the solution. So you know so he you know he thought he had it solved and off he went and you know and then he finds a picture. Of a duck that's going, ha ha. Um, and so, you know, he had to dive back into it, which brought him to a different web address. And okay, that was the real one. And so, this whole thing is, again, it's, you know, is an it an exercise in futility? Well, no, no, no. no, no. 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 But, Did you get to the end of the article about how, or right at the end of it, he was one of like five people? No, he, well, he, he wasn't. Well, no, well, that's what I'm saying. Like the the there was four other people that beat him to the end of it. Right. And it was the, the online equivalent of Black Friday, where. He was the fifth person to get to the the final puzzle, solve it, and he got to the whatever website address, whatever the was, last website whatever it was, was supposed to be. And the message was to him personally: "You're a little bit too late. You made it this far, but four, yeah, we, four, four other people beat you. We only want you, the best and brightest, not the followers." I just keep thinking a cannonball run in my mind when you guys are talking about this. Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> all it is to me in my head. Is like guys driving around. Well, so, so that was the most, ambulances and crap. So, the, so this whole story, but like that was the most. <laughs> that, that was the second most recent one. So the one that's been going on now, it's been going on for two years. Well, and that was when it, when it got really weird. Was you know, but so, when you get it, though, what do you get? Well, that's that's the whole point of the story. They don't really, to, people don't really know because the people that have solved it. Aren't talking about. They're not it. talking. You get the chest bounce it. Well, no, because a, that that's the whole idea. So people are forms. thinking that it's a recruiting age, uh, thing for the NSA. Well, but then something. it went global. So, like right. one of the, one of the things that you know, when when you solve one of these puzzles, it like basically released um, seventeen coordinates. The hounds. No, yeah, released the hounds. <laughs> no, it released seventeen coordinates around the globe. And so these guys all you know basically started working together and saying, okay, the one that's in Holland, you live in Holland, go find what's at that coordinate. And it's it was like, like geocaching to some degree, yeah. Another- because Thing I don't it get. was like you know it was a uh, what what's the I can't think of the stupid it's not a hashtag it's the QR code oh yeah um, right, right, you right, know right, it was yeah. a, you know, a QR code on the back of a, a poster on a telephone pole you know that took you to another clue there was one where it was you know yeah you know in some place else it was a different kind of clue a different kind of picture the other thing that was fascinating was a lot of the locations that these ha- uh, geocaches or whatever it was that they were calling them were in were. Areas that had large concentrations of government facilities yep. and a uh, large concentration of white hat hackers, people that were already in the know, people that would find this interesting to begin with. So they were whoever set this up, whatever group is setting this up, knew their target market, like knew where to plant. It sounds like some world, some, some world of Warcraft guy, like like giggling. Like well, but no, so that's what they said. These yeah. clues are <laughs> not for something, you know. Not, you know. Well, yes, I mean that's what that's what they said is you know when it it's like, when it hit the like the seventeen global coordinates. That's when they were like, all right. This is now weird. we know we're not dealing with a basement dwelling tard. Yeah, you know that's basically just doing this in their free time. That, you know, like a box of well, cheese re- at the end, of right? Yeah, well, Mountain Dew. <laughs> well, they were using the Tor network at some point, weren't they? Yeah, or they were directing people to oh, use almost it. everything. Is, yeah, almost everything that's going on. If it happens online, news it's to in me. Tor. That that's the whole Tor network. That that's like the, the soft underbelly of the black internet, yeah, the dark that nobody, net that nobody knows about. That it's bizarre to me. <laughs> you know, we talk about mashed potato machines now. <laughs> Yeah, Bob's over here sleeping. <laughs> it's so obvious that Bob made it three and a half minutes into that article. <laughs> exactly. We're we're back to the QA discussion. With like I Bob. said, I'm just thinking about like Cannonball Run and like stuff that makes me laugh. How can head. I make this sense make sense to me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but I mean it's it is. I mean it's fascinating, and you know, I mean because I mean that whole crypto, you know, and, and we were we were talking about you know whether it was you know guys like Mitnick and uh, you know and 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 those guys back in the day, and you know all the the basics of hacking and encryption and all that kind of stuff. It, it, just where it's gone and what it does, and and the truly truly weird part of this is that nobody knows who's who's behind it. Like they know they found bit images of a cicada, which is why they're calling it the cicada. Right, group. that's how it got us. Um, yeah. But that's like nobody truly. So like the you know the four guys that made it behind the you know behind the scenes or behind the glass cur- or behind the curtain into this uh, into the website before this guy 
aren't talking about what happened after it. Yeah. You know, so, and, you know, they, yeah, they know that, you know, they know who the four are um, because, you know, there were conversations about it, but they have no idea, you know, what happens after that and what the scoop is. And, you know, was it a job offer? Was it a, you know, take the blue pill, Neo? Was it? <laughs> right. Yeah. They're now outside the matrix. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just, a, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that to me is just, just from a geek point of view, it is, I mean, I know Bob's joking about it, but from a geek point of view, it's just fascinating. You know, the whole cryptography thing is just, it's unreal. Well, yeah, I mean, well, and, and well, and to, you know, one of the things you were touching on, though, is, is the dark net. You know, I mean, it's, to me, that's where some of the most fascinating and outlandish crap, you know, truly is. I mean, you know, we talked about Silk Road a How while does ago. How even access Wait, the dark net? So let me go back. I mean, the people that win these cryptography contests, are they getting, like, hired by RSA? We don't, no, nobody no knows. That, knows. That's the whole They're point. They're sworn to secrecy? Like, they can't? Well, they're that, not talking about that, it. They're not talking about it. That, that's the whole. Are point they still of around it. or yeah. they vanished? No, no they're, they're around. No, they're like I said, they, they, they know like who the four are, and, and they know where they are, but they don't. They should not check his about LinkedIn it. profile to see what he's doing. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's posting <laughs> he a lot about his results. His account, he's on his Facebook account right now. Chief no, no. cryptographer, of Cicada Group. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, why not? They've endorsed one another. You know what he's doing? The winners are calling the Yahoo tech support number right now. No, I'm just saying. What confuses me more, like the Black Friday shoppers or like the people that do this? Like that's I'm arguing in my head right now. Like what? What? And this is Bob's perspective, right? I think I speak for the majority but here. But see, okay, so here's the thing. So how can you say that as deep dive addictive as you get into, like, Grand Theft Auto? Right. That's I mean, all puzzles. There's an end to the... There's there, an but, end to this. But there's an end to don't this. Know, and, and really, it's a mystery end. Right. But you can, but, but you can play GTA V forever. You don't know... You don't I know, could. But you don't know right. how GTO is going to end, right? Or GTA is going to end, right? I already finished it. Well... <laughs> well, when, you bought, you, when you bought the game, no, you didn't know, right? right. So, so that, that's, that's, that's the whole, whole point. That's the whole point. I never like putting puzzles together, though, but games different. <laughs> like, no, no, it's really not. <laughs> you still have to solve things in the game. You know what I saw the worst you thing just ever? Used to see it no, the, I saw the worst thing ever was a puzzle <laughs> that didn't have corners, and it was like the most the worst thing I think. Oh, the ever. puzzle without edges. Yeah, 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 I've seen those. Oh, it's like, this house cannot have a ninety degree angle. It's like, screw it's all of you. Round is a friggin' donut. What are you talking about? I. You know what though? No, I. I, I get your analogy with the whole video game thing but like is it entertaining to find coordinates though and looking under rocks for yes. qr codes to some people yeah. yes wow all right dude like i said i mean it's you know it, 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 geek brain wiring is just it, we're off a little bit and it is what it is like i said i mean it's no different than as much as i like bitch and rail and complain and whine about you know whenever something goes sideways at work and i get a phone call on a saturday night or sunday morning you don't bitch blood. and whine no deep. never no yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's okay. I'm the one that has to solve this problem. Let's figure out what it is and let's get it done. You know, and, and what is it and where is it and how does it happen? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fascinating. It's that challenge that it keeps your brain moving, man. I mean, that's, that's part of the fun of it. But to your, you know, getting back to the whole dark net thing, I mean, it's, you know, there, there are huge entire, like there's a whole internet that nobody knows about it. It is almost kind of you know Matrix esque. Um, well, it's fascinating. It's been like it uses an entirely different routing system. Yeah, Tor. Yeah, Onion routers. Yeah, that. I, I don't even know how to explain. That. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm speechless. <laughs> no, I mean it's so. I mean, like, how do you? you well, they your, call your, it nor onion. your normal computer cannot access it without installing something specific. I well, yeah, you need the Tor browser, right, or there's, right. you know, the thing I shot you guys today. You can actually get basically Tor in a box, um, you know, for fifty bucks. You get a, <laughs> uh, you know, for fifty bucks, you get basically Did you say torn box. Tor no, it, yeah, we already talked about that yesterday, oh. yeah. which brings us back to the perineum. What is that? Uh, <laughs> the taint. Oh, <laughs> but no. So I mean, you can get a, you know, basically it's a box that plugs into your router um, that then gets you access Shouldn't into the Tornet. Router plug into the box. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's all about the hardware that goes into the box, yeah. I'm aware. Um, but no, so I mean, you know, onion routers, I mean, they're, they're called onion routers because they work kind of in the same way. There's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, and it's it's true, you know, internet privacy and, and true internet anonymity, and that's how the whole, you know, Silk Road thing was going on. You're, yeah, you can go out and you can order a hit on people, you know, through a true, you know, you can buy drugs, you can buy guns, you can you buy people. you got to wonder that, people, the, you know, that the government, like the NSA, is like all over the, the Tor network. I mean, I'm uh, sure they are. That, that same article that we've been talking about for the past 20 minutes was talking about the whole it, it dove into the whole tour network and a lot of the clues were within the, yep. the, the, the dark net right and th there he made the comment that that's where a lot of unfortunately that's where terrorists hang out that's where human traffickers right. hang out that's where child molesters hang out 
But if that's the case, you would think the government's all over it, the but it doesn't. But that's the point. It doesn't matter if they are. I mean, so when you're talking about a truly anonymized protocol, like you are within Tor, okay. you know, yeah, you could probably, but, I'm sure there are isn't ways to... But is this thing the point of weakness, the browser, the Tor browser accessing <laughs> the whole dark net anyways? <laughs> it's got to go back to your own computer. <laughs> Ultimately, but the, again, whole point of Onion Router. You, It's not your browser accessing it. It's layer within layer within layer within layer within layer for talking crazy. to other systems that are layer beneath layer beneath layer beneath layer endpoint. So, I mean, if you've Jesus. got, you know, 10, 20... Like matrix 50, crap. You no, know, well, but if you've got, like, you know, 50 layers of, you know, it's security through obfuscation. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, if you've got... I'm 50 just going to la- block a port. <laughs> right. If you've got 50 layers between you and whatever you're trying to get to, eh... You know, it, it's you know, yes. You have time to get away, right? And it's and it's yeah. It's, I'm sure it's absolutely traceable, and I'm sure you know, yeah. It's it's multiple people's full time jobs at like you know the NSA and CIA <laughs> and those guys, you know, to basically hang out and see what they can find out. But like so, they like you know, like Bitcoin transactions, right? Totally anonymous network. There was a whole to do today where they said, hey, you know, there were these thirteen accounts that all consolidated and sent like the equivalent of six million dollars worth of Bitcoin somewhere. Jesus what the Christ. hell is it? They don't know. They know the transactions happen because they can watch it happen, but, but they, they don't know where they don't going. know where it's coming see, now, from. Bitcoin, they don't know where it's going to. They don't know any of that nonsense. Bitcoins is confusing to me as flight. Yeah, like I, the fact that it's. Oh yeah, we had a fantastic conversation at the bar where Bob doesn't understand how planes fly. <laughs> they don't. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Actually, pilots don't know how they, how they fly either. Yeah, pilots don't know how to fly. Yeah, yeah, like, so what's a- the ask them about fly by wire. Their 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 eyes will glaze over. The fact that like you can buy like five hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin like four years ago and now it's worth like a million dollars. Right. Bitcoin no. is. It's still uh, it's like how does it me. how does it raise it's it, it's not like a commodity traded. It, it is. Know, it's fiat money. Right, it's it's a virtual currency, and it's you know, and, and there are Bitcoin farms out there. But I mean, the, so the you know, what, what is it? a Bitcoin the, farm? The, it's server. Cause, so you earn bitcoins by doing certain things, like providing processing power. And this CPU. is not a video game. But it is, um, you know, and so you know by by you know so you can rent out it's like Super Mario Brothers for it's, real, right, exactly, ding, ding, ding. right. Yeah. So I you like can in, in right. a bad way. So you can rent out, you know, basically processing power and CPU power dedicated to the sole purpose of amassing you. I stopped Bitcoins. using t- timeshare systems in 1995. <laughs> no, you didn't. You got anything on a cloud? Welcome to a timeshare system. Yeah. Um, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the cloud? All right. What is the cloud? It's Why above your head. is the cloud? Uh, well, actually, in between it's water break. vapor coalescing in the sky, but well, that's I, not ooh. important right now. In between breaks, it's been standing next to me. <laughs> surely you can't be serious. I am I serious. Am, don't call, call me surely. <laughs> but no, so I mean, it's, you know, it, so Bitcoins, you know, so you gather them and you amass them. And yeah, you can buy them. You can trade them. You I mean, they are a virtual currency, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, to your point, I mean, they're up at like 800 bucks now. Um, but where does, like, I, so I get... Like, if you buy stock in GM and GM makes money and your stock goes up and, you know, who, like, so it's laws of supply and demand. So who, there who is, profits? Who, who, who takes that loss if I make step two? <laughs> step three, profit. Um, no, it's so like cloud, <laughs> it's like the internet cloud diagram. Where does it go? <laughs> the cloud. <laughs> um, but no, so I mean, it's, it, it's a law of supply and demand. And as the demand has grown for, a virtual anonymous currency that can be traded for value online. Um, it, it, it's become more and more valuable. And I always a, wanted to buy Iraqi dinar, and I should have bought Bitcoin instead. Apparently. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, we can have Russ bring us back you know, 10, 12-inch stacks of Ethiopian oh, currency. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, so, I mean, it's, you know, it is. It's supply and demand. I mean, and it's it is virtual. It is anonymous. It is, for all intents and purposes, untraceable. But supply, yeah. Who's 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 again? Giving the who's supply? regulating? Who's Bit limiting? Press. So there, there is, you know, the, the, there Bit is. Press? There's there, a regulating body to yeah. this, and 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 they're making sure that there is never too much of it out there that it doesn't become, you know, a counterfeited currency. That it doesn't become, you know, all it takes you know, is one disc, of, All it takes is one disk magnet on a uh, hard drive somewhere, and the whole thing too. goes away. Well, that was so that was one of the Isn't stories like that Subway? came out. So that was one of the stories that came out not like I think it was like last week where there was a basically a Bitcoin marketplace um, that was set up in China that disappeared, like just basically went offline with like a billion dollars worth of bitcoins and they have no idea what the hell happened to it and it's you know causing a little bit of a freak out in that virtual right. ripple effect world i thought i could have swore i saw i don't know if it was subway but it says accepting bitcoin um serious how the, oh how, lots how, of places are now how yeah. do you even how does that do you i don't know some, you need some, some again i'm just confused device it's like flight to me i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you are familiar with Bernoulli, I aren't you? I have no for idea. Doing stuff. And I can yeah, cash it in for it's other like, stuff. That's right. I, I, it's I, like I, air. I don't I, understand air. I do stuff <laughs> online, and and then I get stuff, and then I can use that stuff to get other stuff, <laughs> and and then there's stuff, and then people want my stuff, and I can <laughs> trade my stuff for their stuff. What's wrong with dollars? <laughs> yeah, like, like, dollars are traceable, man. Yeah, that's right. It's man. all part oh. of the system. I don't bro. want him to know I ate a foot long for lunch today. <laughs> oh, don't isolate that. You don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you all. Absolutely isolating. Are we at a break? Are yet? we at a break yet? We are, actually, you know who we should have in? We'll get uh, we'll get Mike Dennis to come in here one time because he's oh, actually yeah. very very into that whole. We need to get Wolfgang world. and Mark back in here to talk about cryptology. That'd be awesome. Crypto mishpreneur, mishpreneur. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even say. So we got straight. more uh, geek ramblings coming up after the break. This is the IT. Yeah, this is show. probably the least funny, most rambling, and yet still kind of cool show that we've Some, done. Somehow, content. somehow, Bob's still still awake. I, all right, yeah. This is the IT Nitty Show. We'll be right back. back. Still one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't care how many times. I could listen to that all day. <laughs> <laughs> Flying blind on a rocket cycle. Um, not, this, the not the ball worms. Uh, this is uh, episode 21 of the IT and the D show here in we're Robert American, UX. And the, the, great, the great irony is that we're 21 and we're not drinking. That's <laughs> oh, well, drink. you, you may be not. Yeah, I'm, you know, <laughs> no. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, just, we yeah. drank yesterday for all four of us for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we drank all the beer. We <laughs> drank them out of two. Yeah, they had to go to the liquor store, store to get twice. more Jameson because we. Oh my god! Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, you didn't say anything about Jamie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. yeah. No wonder you're not. You're yeah. We're, we're tired. <laughs> our, 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 our brains are a little fuzzy today. <laughs> oh yeah, and then you know WebEx Mondays, right? And then one of them, yeah, don't pan down. <laughs> no, one of them was like, you know, everyone turn your video on. I'm like, you guys don't need to see me. Like, just don't, I didn't even. No, comb, one, no one needs to see you. <laughs> I didn't even comb my hair this morning, so I'm like <laughs> working feverishly to like you know not look like I just woke up. <laughs> when, when that's exactly what happened. Right, exactly. All right, so just for giggles, uh, not that anybody's going to call or tweet or do anything with us, but it is 313-462-0107. We are at IT in the D, and we are at Facebook.com slash IT in the D. Uh, we are kind of hardcore geeking out, which I'm loving. Bob's hating. Yeah, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> Why do people I, climb mountains again? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. How do planes fly? <laughs> <laughs> could talk about code breaking all night. Oh, I, I yeah. absolutely could. I yeah. mean, that's that. Yeah, just something I love. Um, actually, one of the Play things- Minesweeper for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same Not thing. The same thing. <laughs> but no, one of the things that was really cool, and I shot you guys uh, the link earlier, was you know they uh, they did some sort of uh, study on Amazonian uh, tribes and and beer drinking and why peer, beer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and we're why, awesome. Yeah, exactly. We're friggin' geniuses. <laughs> Science said so. Um, about how like you know peer groups that were formed by the, you alcohol know, these remote <laughs> tribes and, and they would get together and they would drink beer and they would have like visitors in from other tribes and what that meant from a reciprocity perspective and, and how that strengthened the bonds between tribes and between people. And it was Did you ever all see about the show, beer. How Beer Saved the World? Yeah. I mean, that was the whole point is they accidentally... The just- bubonic plague, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, it was, it was the Christian monks in Ireland, right? No, Mesopotamian days when they had like. Um, I thought you were talking about the Dark Ages. Your ancient Mesopotamians. No, because people were people <laughs> Thanks, were Cliff uh, Clavin. People were <laughs> people were nomadic, like they just jumped from the you know ga- you know wherever they could get supplies. Well, one day they were gathering like ho- they found hops and left it in the rain, and then it sat that for a couple a days. That was a cartoon. No, that was a cartoon. That was that was a cartoon. And then it rained again, and then it became like. Oh, a, I'm going to drink this now. It became a rudimentary thing. Of and then they became farmers, and then 
basically they built villages around the farms. Like okay, well, but that's that's how that okay. So I, I know where you're going, but that's the there and there really is a good case that's for how why they discovered beer, beer. Well, no, why beer was the foundation of civilization yeah, was right. because up until that point, everybody was really nomadic, and that's when they started planting and growing and harvesting and all that stuff. But when you see start, when I say it, I'm dumb. When Dave says it, he's right. I love. Well, it. <laughs> okay. Smarty pants. What you said was the whole how beer saved civilization. That's what the show was called. Okay, but that, okay, that's how beer started civilization. How it saved civilization. The show was called how beer saved the world. And I'm sure what they were getting to was the whole thing in the Middle Ages when children. the water was poisoned. Ch- children, yeah. children, and, but the beer wasn't. Children, right. children, right. because hey, it was boiled. Hey, and, hey right. zip it. dot com. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're both right, Dave. Continue your story. We're not arguing. We're talking. Exactly. This is what we do all the time. Is that what? Uh, you, is it, <laughs> <laughs> this is us one on one every day. Um, but no. So it was really kind of cool. And it, it's, well, that's why the German beer beer purity standards, like all that, right, exists because of it. That. Doesn't have water, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a million proof. But no, I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's kind of you know, get, kind of getting back to where we started the show, which is you know who we are and what we do and all that kind of stuff. Is it this was, a show over yet? Right. <laughs> it was you know getting together for a beer, you know, mm-hmm. hanging out. Getting to meet people and building relationships and networking, and that's basically what this study says is a really, really good idea to do. Um, and I just thought it was kind of cool. But I guess you know to, to dive back into the whole you know how do planes fly thing. One of the other things we were talking about <laughs> was you know the, was that a segue? I don't it, know. It, it, it was. Dave is saying that even the Amazonians know what we're doing is right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, if, if remote tribes in the rainforest of the Amazon. So what know you're that saying is right. we need to get Amazon.com as a sponsor. Uh, uh. <laughs> Actually, not. Necessarily Necessarily. So one of the other stories that came out was how Amazon.com, um, apparently they're picking jobs, uh, like the packers in the warehouse and that kind of stuff, are really, really bad for you physically and mentally. What? And there was there was this whole study that came out where basically, you know, the, like the night shift guys, they walk like 11 miles over the course Excellent. of their shift. Um, and, and they've got like all of these sensors and, and, and like input output stuff. They should be wearing a Fitbit. Well, yeah, they basically put the, turn themselves Give into them cyborgs. <laughs> Give them cyborgs. Yeah, nice. Um, and, you know, so if, like if it takes them, you know, six seconds to you know pack an order. Oh, that's the and whole the standard Kaiser is thing. four. Yeah, you know, you know they get dinged and their performance reports get routed immediately to their supervisors and yep. all that kind of nonsense. It, 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 it a little. I bit hear crazy. about that all the time. Mark from, worked from for the UPS. plants at Chrysler. Yeah, I mean the whole Kaizen thing. Like, yeah. like if a little bin of of pieces parts for whatever it is that they're assembling on the yep. line is two inches or uh, foot away from where it's supposed to be, yep. it affects the productivity by you know if you exponentially you know multiply it out, it's it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Mark worked for UPS for a week and didn't make it just because basically it was like by the millisecond oh, you were timed on yeah. your stops. Yeah. FedEx is even worse. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely crazy. Um, so, you know, back to the whole cell phones on plane things. So, I mean, they're, they're starting back to... to real, well, we were. I was getting there and then I got sidetracked and I'm getting back there. So horribly Are you still talking? <laughs> <laughs> so well, apparently that's what he does with Bob every day. Just interrupts each other. <laughs> we do. That's, that's basically how every no, conversation right. we no, ever have I'm goes. right. Listen Bob, Bob tells a story, Dave retells it and says he's right. <laughs> no, you don't know what you're talking about. I have the about. idea then he Dave forgets about it, and then two weeks later, he goes, I got this great idea. Oh, so he's after. Oh, okay. Do we have to talk about the Clubhouse BFD story? Do we have to talk about the... I think it goes, yeah. <laughs> it goes both ways. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Uh, yeah, well, I'll splice that one with the he had a foot long. Um, <laughs> but no, so, you know, so they're starting to relax the rules about, you know, cell phone use on planes, and basically, it, it, I, I still don't think this is a really good idea. Because, Nothing good can come of this. Because even though they're saying, okay, you can do everything except talk, you know people are going to be talking on the phone. Bob, as a seasoned traveler, what say you? Keep your f and mouth shut. Exactly. Um, you know what? There's a. There, I have a rule. Um, I like small talk. You know, like kind of like the self serve friends, Just like the fight club thing. Yeah, yeah. Before the plane takes off, and right when you're like kind of landing. Um, it's very rare. Like when I used to, when I was a uh, platinum elite and I had first class, I mean, it was almost like you talked the whole time because you knew they were in business. Right. Um, and coach, I don't talk to, like small talk in the beginning, small talk at the end, do not even, you know, nothing in the. So it's like a men's room. It's like an understanding thing. Nobody talks. Well, because like, the guy. Eyes the, forward, no, no look yeah, left, yeah, no yeah, look yeah, right. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. No, because what happens is like the guy behind me doesn't stop talking the whole flight and he tells his life story and you know his dog's name and his kid's name and he it doesn't make and any you know, sense and, why he's and you know the guy sitting next to him is bored out of his mind and you just want to and it's kind of like the guy that cuts you off in the highway and you speed up just so you can look at him like <laughs> I, and just give him that eye <laughs> give him the evil eye like when you stand up to get your luggage you just turn around and go who in the I'm listening to you for two and a half hours like stop talking that, well, would, be a, that would be a good uh, uh, experiment for social media say hey you know hey Sally you know make sure you know she studies good 
good for her test next week. And oh. I used to be like, how do you know that? Well, because was, I listened to you for three hours. For three on the hours. Plane. <laughs> well, there was that great thing you emailed out today, where you know the, the you know story about you know girl on subway who won't shut up and you know oh, talk yeah, talk talk joke, talk right, on her yeah. cell phone, <laughs> and you know, and obviously the person on the other line is her husband who's insecure because she's saying, oh no, it wasn't with him from sales, it was with my boss, and yes, you're the only man in my life, and no, you know that that, that and she just won't shut up, won't shut up, and won't. so finally the guy next to her gets sick of listening to this and leans over into her phone and says, would you just come back to bed already? <laughs> Never used your phone on the subway again. <laughs> and, so, and, and you know, I, I, honestly, I think it's going to be that, that type of joking situation where this whole phones on airplanes is going to self-regulate. Yeah. People are going to weed out the people that don't. I got yelled at know. a Panera for talking. What? There was a lady that's there every morning about Panera by my house. Right. And she sits on her laptop. And I forget who called me. And I'm having a coffee. And I'm oh, like, I remember the story now. Just yeah, talking yeah. like I'm talking. You know, I'm not like going like this. Like, you know, I'm just talking. She's like, will you like please. Like talking about a mashed potato machine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was probably a dumb conversation like that. And she's like, will you stop talking? I go, it's a public place. This isn't a library. So I'm on the phone then. And I go, I have to move seats because this lady that thinks it's a library doesn't like people talking This lady talking that thinks her. I'm in her. Her living room. Right. Right. Yeah. I, go, I go, why don't you work out of your house? You got your stupid, you know, every day she's there, same seat. So I wanted to get there, like, try to get there like 6.30 in the morning and take her oh, seat. Oh, you totally should. Because oh, she's yeah. going to have so. an anxiety attack because I took her spot. Because she's Sheldon. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you moved her cheese. There was guys that used to go to, when we used to go to Roger's Roost, you know, because I grew up across the street from it in uh, Sterling right. Heights there. And there was the same six guys. It didn't matter if you were there Sunday at noon for the game yes. or if you were there 6 o'clock Thursday or midnight on a Tuesday. Those six guys were at that table. So one day the, the waitresses all got together and picked the table up and put it in the back room and just watched them as they walked in and freaked the hell out. Because <laughs> their table, because their creatures that, yeah, I don't, <laughs> where's, where's my spot? Where's, where's, where's my, my spot? spot? Yeah. And that's, you know, I think, yeah, the whole anxiety thing, but like, why can't, like, I get the whole, be cognizant of who you're talking around. I don't care if you're at Panera or on a plane, but you're going to do nothing but annoy people. And there's a lot, of, there's a lot a of ambient noise on a plane when it's in flight, right? So it's not like you can talk quietly like this. I mean, no one's going to hear you. Talk you. you need to talk very loud. You need to talk very loud. Heard, right? Right. Yeah, and that's, that's, there's no way. So we, we started to have this conversation before the show, right, and talking about cell phones on yep. planes and things. And I... Like I'm cool with the electronic devices on planes thing, which just got freed up too. Right. Like, it, and it's it, it's a terrible injustice that you can't use your Kindle and read your electronic book on the plane, or yeah, couldn't kinda, for a long time. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, it, that's kind of what I was trying to get to early on because you know, I've left my phone on plenty of times on the plane, forgot sure. to turn it off, or inadvertently bumped the power button, right. or, or done on, it on purpose. And guess what? We didn't crash. Right. Yep. Like so, yeah. electronic devices are okay. I actually have noise canceling headphones that I wear on the plane because I don't want to talk to you. Right. I don't want to engage in conversation. I don't want to hear what you have to say. The woman in Vegas on the way back that wanted to tell me about the Nickelback concert that she was at and how kick ass oh, it was uh, was Kill me now, kill me now, I kill put me now. The headphones on and she was still trying to talk to me and it's just like lady <laughs> That's the universal thing. A hint. Like, I'm putting these on and they, they, they're Bose noise yeah, canceling headphones. This is the universal that are so I no, no longer like, some, Somehow you can still you the hear ad her. in the Sky Mall magazine for what this thing does. <laughs> My boss's boss today was talking to the WebEx. He goes, You know, everyone always hated when I, when we flew, when I flew because every time I would land and hook up to Wi Fi, like they would get like 25 emails from my flight. He goes, Now at least they come sporadic as I'm on the plane. But again, he's not <laughs> right. talking. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've used you it's know, like batch system. <laughs> right. Out, when we did a, uh, we're flying. I went to Florida. It was like ten bucks for Wi Fi. I go, that was the best ten bucks I ever spent because I occupied myself in things. Oh, other absolutely. Than, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, because I don't read, so I mean, except for like <laughs> web ever, <laughs> yeah. like books. Well, you, you especially don't yeah, read Dave's posts. Well, no. <laughs> and clearly, you've never read a lick of science in your life if you don't know what about Bernoulli's principle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I never liked science. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fad. Could have been a doctor for, for that whole chemistry thing, right? <laughs> Oh, I hated chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Was, no, I got in trouble for uh, turning on like four Bunsen burners on a thing of ink and blew up all over the ceiling, and then I failed the class. Like, yeah, <laughs> and, and yet you'll spend your Sunday mixing up fake blue tarp water. I did. <laughs> I did. I, I laughed. That was the best time I ever had. See, it's it's all about finding the analogy that makes it worthwhile and appealing. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what were we talking about? 
talking uh, on planes. Cell phones on planes. <laughs> <laughs> Snakes on a plane. Who knows yeah, at this right. point? Yeah. That's no, but, what I was going to be. Right. Uh, no, but say, you know, the, the kind of the corollary there is, you know, er, there are people that are kind of tweaking out because they're saying that in 2017, the phone companies can start cutting landlines. And and basically no longer on purpose. Off, yeah, no longer offering landline service as of 2017. Uh, Good riddance. Well, it, it, I, I, again, comfort factor for some people. Like you know, at the old house, you know, it's we, old school, dude. That's old school thinking. Okay, but at the old house, how many people the fear old change? Thing, change the layout in Facebook and see how many people panic. Oh, I'm sorry that that free service that you're using it changes is. all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, but can, well, but so like the the alarm system at my old house, the only way it worked was to a landline. That's the only way it could work. Guess what? You have a cable internet connection. Okay. What if the power? So that's go? VoIP. If I lose power and something happens, my alarm system no longer works and can't contact anybody to let them know. That defeats the purpose. That was all, right. It's backup for all that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's you know, and then there are. I mean, so for those you know, and you've got people that you know keep the landline in case of emergency, in case right. of power no, outage, inter- and that kind of stuff. I was just playing devil's advocate. Well, and, and the other part of it is, you know, the, there are places that don't have great coverage, and the only thing they have is landlines, and yep. so they're worried about that it's going to kind of turn into the whole. You know, part of the healthcare debacle that's going on is well, if you live in a rural area, you might only have one plan available to you. Well, if you live in a rural area and you only have one phone carrier available to you, and they right. decide that region is not profitable, You're and done. they send you a letter that says, "Hey, guess what? Ninety days from now, you will no longer have a landline." Then what? You know, you know I, can't I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that that happens because there's got to be a safety issue that comes into play. Somebody's going to squawk loud enough and say, you know what? Hey, in, in northeastern Michigan, if if I'm on a farm in that exact scenario that, that you just described, and their only uh, source of communication, and they're still using dial-up because there's no there's no high speed internet there, there's no satellite there. Okay, and if they and if the phone company cuts them off. There's no way that the government's going to allow them to say have okay. no 911 access. Okay, but then ca- Captain Anti-Socialist, um, how do you how do you force? <laughs> We're a, not going to make this a political. No, thing. but so how do you force a company to maintain a non-profitable, non-viable segment of their company if it's not in their best interest to do so? Because I mean that's that's their whole argument is that with the declining population of landlines, right. the proliferation of cell phones and voice over IP and all that stuff, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, to landlines no, are I, no I, longer I totally profitable get it for from a, from a from a company point of view. It just it, it's it's I don't know that that would happen from a goodwill point of view from the company standpoint. Anyways, it would just be a PR nightmare because it it would only take two or three situations where you know old man farmer has a heart attack and can't get. 911 access because well, his landline was cut off. It's going to happen eventually, right? Like it, it will happen. There's got to right? be like yeah, people. People don't travel by train by choice, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, like it's still there. That, that, that but took, is it that's, a that's prevalent took form of yeah, communi- took, or, 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 or transportation? No. Same thing with landlines, right? And there's right. a big resistance. Greyhound to buses still run, so I mean, yeah, Am- Amtrak's still around. One yeah. of the big squawks about this is, it, well, I got to pay more for my service now, like. Right. landline versus what I'm going to have to spend to have a cell phone. I'm going to have to shell out a lot more money, and, and that's why I don't want to do it. I don't have the money right. to support that. But see, that's what's interesting. Is like you know, uh, our buddy Chris Martello, he has a, a cottage in northeastern Michigan, and they don't have phone service out there. They don't have high-speed internet. They've asked to get high-speed internet, yeah. but but the companies will refuse to you go out there because, because it's so it's because so it's so it's so, it's in so expensive of... for the company to, to go out there. Yeah, you can get satellite satellite dude, broadband. It's, is, dude, is, it's not it's not cabins in middle of nowhere, Michigan. But, My in-laws' house in K-Pack. You know they can't but, get so cable. Just, that's the middle of nowhere. There. K-Pack is middle of nowhere. Oh, that Michigan. is absolutely middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, right. But you you just proved my point. That, yeah, yeah. So that scenario, I. I just I don't see it happening anytime soon. I really don't. There's got to be some sort of. Well, they said plan. 2017. So I mean, you've, they've got four All years right. to figure it out. Yeah, but, just, like, just like the healthcare thing, right? <laughs> oh, well, like on. I said, it'll it'll just go there. It'll, I did. It'll, like I said, it'll turn it's into low that. It's hanging fruit, Bob. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yet another thing that'll turn into into a debacle because right. of rural areas, single carrier, yet yada, yada, yada. That's the one thing I hate more than anything is the people that whine. They go, Japan has more broadband and it costs more less. And yeah, yeah how, but how that earthquake work? It's the size of. Like it's half of California. It's like you right. don't understand pucks. Yeah. Norway has more broadband views, but it's like yeah, they're the size of they're, they're New half Hampshire. The size of, yeah, they're right. half the size of Michigan. You know, right? It's like a, upper you, peninsula. It's, you know how hard it is to blanket coverage three hundred million. You know, it's not. Easy. Well, look at all the issues they have with 
Ford Field. You know, so you know, you've, <laughs> yeah. you've got yeah one you it's know a big house in yeah. Ann Arbor. When yeah. was the last time you tried to update your Facebook status? Right. You know, with one hundred and ten thousand people <laughs> floating around, it's a pain in the ass to get Wi Fi in this building. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's using and it. And nobody's here, here <laughs> except us. I tried to actually use Twitter for uh, for like the first time in my life in Ford Field because like you, I forget if you win some crap or you get a stupid picture on the billboard. So I'm like, eh, eh. right. It did, it, water. it did not go through to say. Oh yeah, you, I do. Yeah, we're sitting there pushing the button. I'm uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he uh, capped an elevator over there. You know, push the button and nothing <laughs> happens. So push the button again until nothing course, keeps yeah. happening. Yeah, over and, and over, over again. Harder. <laughs> it's, like, it's like looking at the picture of the sailboat. Oh, it's, it's a sailboat. It's a sailboat. It yeah, it just gets angrier and angrier and angrier. <laughs> Actually, speaking of Twitter, though, I mean, one of the one of the things that was kind of uh, that caught my eye is so the, there's a guy who took uh, some of the photos in Haiti right after the earthquake hit, and I guess uh, you know he posted about it on Twitter and did was it like, trend hey, worldwide, man. It really did. So, but what's weird <laughs> is. Katie. So Getty Images got sued because they took oh, his yeah. photos um, and basically started reselling them out to the major news networks and everything else. And you know, and what was funny is they actually screwed themselves. And and this might sound a little familiar to you um, because they tried to basically go after him. Uh, first, to say that, hey, we want to prove a point that we're not infringing on your copyright, so we're going to come after you. This sounds familiar. Yeah. It's Who said, does things like that? I know. Yeah, I don't know what uh, any local companies do. Right. Um, and so not so he said, okay, well, not only am I going to bow down, I'm going to file all these countersuits, and he literally just won and won $1.3 million um, from Getty Images for all their you know unauthorized use. And basically their defense boiled down to, well, but it was retweeted, and we like we didn't know it wasn't for public common domain, but it was kind of an interesting question where, okay, so how much research and homework do you have to do? This sounds familiar. Remember the the whole uh, the Detroit Cityscape skyline for the cop cars? Yeah. The, 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 was that a Canadian photographer that, yeah. that took a picture of the Detroit skyline? Yep. And didn't get any... But if any you think well, it, and as it turned out, they, they used his photo in the mock-ups that they were doing so like in the wasn't press the kits, final thing? but the ones that actually made it onto the cop cars, no, that was that was a it's local. So Detroit dumb driver. if you take a picture of a skyline and you own it. it, it to me, that it doesn't. I it's, don't know. It's intellectual property. I mean, it's a totally a gray line. I totally see what you're saying, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where you own the There's photo. Thirty seven billion photos of the Detroit skyline. Yep. You know. That no, was, that's the one I took. <laughs> Idiot. Well, but, an what, idiot. but what he did well but I mean if you look if you look at that though like that one and by and large I totally agree with you but like that one where he had done like a lot it, of it was pretty, to it, it was and it pretty, was pretty obvious pretty that obvious. that was the yeah. photo that he had used or that he had taken and that he had went ahead and touched up um, so you could take a picture of everything every square inch of the whole entire planet and if anybody uses anything you go no it's mine yeah, go- well, Bob, you do have a Google Street SLR View ca- now. camera now. Yeah. Google Street View now owns everything. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Did, oh, speaking of Google Street View, did you hear the story about uh, the the guy? Unfortunately, that the lost his Got son. Yeah. yeah, the lost his son, and Google Street View took a picture, a satellite picture, and that one particular picture had a picture of his son lying yep. dead on the sidewalk. What? Seriously, like his, you know how the Google Street View is like what three or four years old, right? So mm-hmm. like when you're looking at Google Maps, you're looking at you know four years ago. Well, he lost his son in a horrific, you know, some sort of robbery murder gone right. bad. And his son was lying there dead on the sidewalk. It was still a crime scene, an active crime scene. There's cops everywhere. And it just so happened that the Google satellite was, or whatever it is that they use, took a picture of that particular scene, that particular sidewalk, wherever that was. What's in the California. chances of that? One in a zillion. Whatever it was, doesn't yeah. matter. They took a picture. They published it because they're going through. They're archiving all the stuff and they're publishing it for their Google Maps. Because they don't look at it, and it just and just so happens that that you know the the father of the father of this kid that that was killed was scanning through and pulled up that particular wherever it was location in California, saw his son dead four years ago, and crazy. Was like, it's like Google, what the hell. So they went through. They ended and they, up they had pulling to, it down. Yeah, yeah they, had, they 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 pulled it down, but it was. It's still. not Google's. You can't scour all those. No, of course it's not. Fun. But it's just, it was one of those things where it was a freak happening. You know, yeah. it's just unfortunate. I really. remember the first time I saw a Street View and I saw like my Jeep in front of my condo, and I'm like, oh, who yeah, the hell? yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, Big Brother, Big Brother. All right, well, hey, we are coming up against the end of the show, so I want to make sure we hit. Uh, so our website is DetroitNet.org, or you can find us at itandd.com, .net, .org, whatever. Uh, Dot co. Dot co. Dot info. Dot whatever. Um, dot me. We've got our <laughs> support info. the troops event that's coming up on December 12th. <laughs> Jerk. Uh, 
Um, dot, got our got our event coming up on December twelfth. Is uh, there a dot dot? Uh, I, there should be. There should be. <laughs> yeah, it's Morse code. That's what that is. <laughs> that's what it um, means. Detroit dot dot dot. And that's that's us. That's that's our show for this week. We geeked out a little bit more than we usually do, and <laughs> we get a dot ca. <laughs> No. Wait, wait, dot .ca, dot, dot .uk, dot .ca, whatever. Oh, a dot oh. .ca, dot .ca. We could be a dot .caca domain. <laughs> <laughs> and with that thing, we're out. Thanks again for hanging out with us. IT the D show. <laughs> Talk to you. Yes. Beat no, it. I'm just like doing like stupid stuff to make me laugh. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. Or wait, what do you have in Switzerland? Some kind of pikeman? I don't know. I am from Germany. Where the age of consent is 14. What is it? The Alabama of Europe? In many ways, yes. The emergency destruction. System is now activated. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum.